Hello everybody and welcome to Road America. Road racing is a part of local tradition here. At the end of the Second World War with a, a feeling of optimism around the whole of this area, racing was on the public and county roads. But after a couple of major accidents, Cliff Tufty in the mid-1950s decided that instead of road racing going away, that he would build a permanent road racing circuit that reflected the area roads. Road America is what he came up with. And the 4.048 mile circuit has changed very little in the last 60 odd years. Placed in a beautiful, picturesque surrounding, it is America's National Park of Speed. And it's the venue for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship this weekend. The cars are rolling as they'll be competing in the Continental Tire Road Race Showcase, live on IMSA TV and radio. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm John Heindorf, and delighted to say that Jeremy Shaw will be alongside us here, alongside me here in the IMSA Broadcast Centre. And down as our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter is Shea Adam. Good afternoon, Shea. Has the pit lane cleared? And is everyone out on this beautiful circuit? Good afternoon, John. And yes, they are all gone. It's just me, myself, the pit lane officials, a lot of mechanics, and a lot of really eager fans. There's grandstands just across the start finish line. And those people are ready to get things kicked off. Two pace laps here means that there's a lot of time to get heat in your tires to get your brakes up to operating temperature, to have the opportunity to make your race car as optimal as you can for the start, because the run into turn one normally sees a lot of position shuffling around, and that's the sound of Robert Lawn in the number 85 JDC Miller Motorsport car, the one that was the pole position. That was the car that was quickest yesterday. Will it be the first car going into turn one? That's to be decided, because he's going to have to hold off Ricky Taylor and that accurate Team Penske. Throughout the race, we'll keep you updated with the positions in the three classes on our Cadillac race update. Our Porsche keys to the race, Jeremy Shaw. This is a very long lap, and that has to be factored in to your tactics here. Well, yeah, the two pace laps around here, yes, it gives uh, plenty of time uh, to uh, build some heat into the tires and the brakes and everything else, but it also uses up a fair bit of fuel as well. That's a good so, point. Uh, you know, that's a factor. And uh, fuel consumption here, yeah, it's so important. You can't get it wrong, Jeremy, you but there's no margin for error. You can't coast into the pit lane here. No, it's uphill here and uh, significantly uphill the last uh, mile or so. So, uh, yeah, that ain't going to happen. You're not going to be coasting into the pit lane. If you're going to make a move here, the speeds are very high. This is one of the highest average lap speeds of any circuit uh, anywhere in the world, actually, but certainly for a road circuit for the IMSA schedule. You can't be half-hearted about passing here because the speed differentials of cars within their classes is not that great. You're trying to eke out a tiny advantage. Uh, average speed in qualifying, 130 point one nine one miles an hour yes average speed of 130 miles an hour this is all about commitment this place is this place and uh, the consequences if you make a mistake uh, can be catastrophic tires we talked about fuel the other side of the management that the teams have to do along with their drivers this is a high wear circuit and the temperatures well they're higher than we've seen at any time this week so far yeah it is warm this afternoon uh, and the sun is uh, beating down as well. It wasn't, it was sort of kind of an overcast earlier on, but the sun's coming down now and it is pretty humid out there. It is going to be hard work. And you know, because of the long straights here, most of the cars are running pretty low downforce because if you run lower downforce, it's less drag, you're faster on the straights, you've got a better opportunity to make a passing maneuver. However, that also means the car's going to be sliding more through the corners. And that is what builds the heat into the tires. And ultimately, if you're not careful, causes the tires to overheat. Three different classes, GT. Daytona will be led away by the red and white number 58 Wright Motorsports Porsche. That's found some pace performance. Didn't get the result perhaps they felt they deserved at Lime Rock Park last time out. Pat Long, one of uh, North America's finest road racers, will start that alongside him. Dominic Bauman in the number 14, the blue Lexus, no number 15 Lexus. Jack Hawksworth had a very big and scary accident in the brakes field on him in turn eight in morning warm-up. In GT Le Mans, it's a Ford front row. Chip Ganassi has locked it out with Dirk Muller and Ryan Briscoe, that number 66 car, leading the championship for the GT Le Mans at the moment. 
and at the front of the field, Robert Alon, who was on the front row here last year, has qualified on pole position for the number 85, the bright yellow Orica from JTC Miller Motorsport. Robert Alon, a quiet man, tall, bearded, long hair, doesn't look like your average racing driver, Drives like one though, my goodness me, he set a cracking time in qualifying and he'll have Ricky Taylor in the Acura Team Penske number seven alongside him. And the whole shot to the first corner could be very important here. Two hours and 40 minutes are on the clock. If you're sitting down, shuffle to the front of your seat because you won't need all of it for the next two hours and 40. Robert Alon has seen the pace car pull away and into the pit lane. The Corvette Z06 has gone, and now another yellow car has the field in tow as they head up the very steep hill. We are waiting for the green flag to be shown. It's in the air, it's waving, and they're on the throttle. Alon gets a decent start, but watch out for the black number 10 of Renger van der Zander. He's making a move, already dragging up to the back of the pole sitter. He's almost bump drafting, going into turn one. Alon's got the inside. That will be able to be defended, and he takes the lead. Looked like Van der Zander just had to drop back a little bit there as uh, Ricky Taylor in the number seven Acura slots into second. The team car from Penske hung out to dry just a little bit for a moment down at turn three, but then drops in behind. And then it's the first of the Mazdas. Oli Jarvis took it in behind Juan Montoya. Good respectful driving there from the second, third, fourth, fifth place cars. Each of them, yeah, they didn't push the limits too far. They gave each other racing room and they're clear to race now. And uh, it's going to get pretty heated over these next few laps but good to see the car settling down. There's a bit of a mistake for Juan Pablo Montoya at the exit of turn five. That is going to let the Mazda move alongside up the hill. Oliver Jarvis trying to make the move at six. And the other Mazda goes through as well. Wow. Two mistakes there for Juan Pablo Montoya. Ah, it's very unusual from JPM. And through goes Harry Tinknell. Didn't need a second invitation. The Englishman there pouncing. And 85 then leading as they go through the carousel for the first time. I'm just trying to see who was in second place. It is still the Ricky Taylor, number seven, then Van der Zander in GT Le Mans, the two Fords still leading out from the first of the Corvettes. That is Antonio Garcia, who is in the lead of the championship, and Pat Long hanging on with Dominic Bauman right behind him in the GTD. And Madison Snow's gone around, and uh, Dominic Bauman up into second place, so the championship leading Lamborghini now up to second place. A very impressive first lap by young Madison Snow, young in age, but not bereft of experience. Off goes the 52. That's a very Larry moment. Sebastian Saavedra was in that car this morning for practice. And it's Gustavo Jakobin who started the day, had a rear uh, left problem this morning and didn't do the full warm up. And that car is beached. And that's going to be a full course yellow, I think. It's into the final corner. And the car looking very squirrely as it came through turn three where the old Bill Mitchell Bridge used to be, not there now. Now that car, I think, is beats. I can't see it coming out, it's driver's left. At the moment, we are staying green. I'm looking to the starter stand to my left-hand side. Tony is listening to see what is happening. They're giving race control, giving the time that a 4.048 mile circuit allows to see what has developed. I just wonder if we get it, if there is a snatch tractor down there that could get that car pulled out before the before the cars come around. The pits are being closed. No, we're going full course yellow. Full course yellow after just three minutes and not even a full lap of racing. So that gives us a chance to take a breath, Jeremy. Yeah, that's a shame, isn't it, uh, really? Because uh, that was looking already pretty pretty exciting. What a shame there for Yakima. This team's had absolutely no luck this season. Let's see if we can see what happens. Well, I think it just goes very, he very does. wide coming through 13. And there is a bit of tarmac <laughs> there. Wow, how yeah. close was he to wiping out Johannes van Overbeck in the Nissan number 22? And Johannes would have known nothing about that because he was coming from the far side of the car where he's unsighted. Chevrolet pickup truck getting in the action straight away with the tow strap. Now, Gustavo Jakerman being a little over exuberant there. They're going to pull 
the door open and just have a chat with the driver. The tow strap is already on by the ever-efficient track services and rescue teams. And the Chevy truck is already rolling. And I think there's no other damage to that car. If they can get that car yeah. out of the gravel, gravel, they might be able to let that run. And, this, and then that would qualify for what's called a, a quicker yellow or a short yellow. They'll just wait for the safety car to come through now. In fact, the safety car don't even think has picked up the leader yet. Robert Alon has slowed to safety car pace, and he has got a bright yellow car, so it's at least in keeping with the Z06 Corvette, which is doing duty. Very, very quick indeed. <laughs> Went off the circuit and back on for Gustavo Jackerman. Just a cloud of dust to the driver's right. I mean, if he'd gone any further off, they'd have wanted to see his pass to let him get back on the circuit. Front and rear of the car just bouncing. And he tried to get some retardation from the braking, but there was little or no opportunity because the car was bouncing around so much. The safety car train has gone past the scene of the accident. So we will have the opportunity now to get that car cleared. Antonio Garcia did split the Fords, by the way, before that yellow came out. So Dirk Muller leading the championship and leading GTLM from second place in the championship and perennial second place finisher this year, Antonio Garcia in the number three. And then it's the 67 of Ryan Briscoe. Lawrence Vanto started the 912 Porsche and he's in fourth position. In GT Daytona, Pat Long uh, is leading Dominic Bauman was briefly pushed down the field there, but I think in the kerfuffle behind that incident for Yakerman, Madison Snow's lost a couple of positions and now finds himself not only behind the Lexus again, but also behind a fast starting Patrick Lindsay back in the championship this weekend in the 73, the dark grey Park Place Porsche. Then it's the championship leader. Yeah, not sure what happened there, because I, I noted the number 48 car coming past you at the end second. of the first lap in second place. Correct. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure why he's uh, dropped back there. Uh, but uh, the number 52 car has resumed, but it is a lap behind everybody else. That's uh, disappointing. But uh, certainly a good start there for the two Mazdas. They uh, they were pretty happy with their cars yesterday. When they arrived here, they hadn't done any testing here. They'd done a lot, a lot on the simulator, but not actually out track, I believe. Uh, and they went kind of two different directions in terms of setup on the 77 and 55 cars. But they diverged yesterday. They were really happy with the cars going into qualifying. But unfortunately, they, they made some wrong decisions for qualifying. So they didn't qualify quite as well as they might have hoped, but already on the move at the beginning of the race. Bit of uh, bodywork off at the side of the road there. And I thought that was a different area of the track from where Gustavo went off. And it looked like it might have been from the 31 car. But... Uh, Yes, it was. The right rear, what I call the cheese wedge, the legality panel behind the right rear wheel of the wheel and engineering Cadillac, uh, Eric Curran's car, and Eric starting that car, championship leader in prototype by just a point ahead of Philippe Albuquerque, uh, mm. has lost the right rear part of the bodywork from behind the right wheel. Now, not sure whether that could have just happened when people were checking up trying to avoid Gustavo no, Jakob. They were ahead of him. All oh, right, that's it. So that's a different part of the circuit. It was a wild ride for Gustavo. He just didn't get the car turned in and was trying too hard early on. Johannes van Overbeck, he needs to go and put the lottery tickets on after that one yeah. because I'm not sure how much he knew about how he missed that car yeah. careering across the track. He wouldn't have seen it coming, no, probably, because it was way out there of, 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 of his uh, peripheral vision. Yikes, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty scary. Short yellow, no wave buys, no reset of the field. The ZOX, Z06 Corvette is already heading to the pit lane, and Robert Alon has to do it again, but at least, at least this time he doesn't have anyone alongside him. Ricky Taylor will start line astern, single file restart. Green flag given as they come through the final corner with still two and a half hours plus to run here at Road America, and we're back to racing. And Antonio Garcia got a great run on Dirk Muller as they came out of the final corner. I'll keep an eye on what's happening behind the prototypes as they come down to the first quarter. 
and Muller is defending, he's in the middle of the road in the Ford as he comes down to the first corner, so the battle for GTLM is on and the WeatherTech Ferrari was throwing a bit of smoke out of that car as well, a lot of smoke out of that Cooper McNeil car as the GT Le Mans cars pile through turn one and down to the bottom of the hill at turn three. Meantime, at the front of the field, Alon has done it again and got the start, or the restart, Jeremy, exactly right. Yeah, he has. There's uh, the number 31 car squeezing down down the inside of Montoya. Montoya really is struggling in these early stages there. There's Eric Curran making a move. He's on a bit of a charge here at the start. Yeah, he's followed through there as well by uh, the uh, Xiao Barbosa, Xiao driving with a splint on his wrist and also going through there was Johannes van Overbeck, you're right. That number six uh, Acura Team Penske car. Now I wonder if they've, uh, you don't have to start, remember, on the tyres on which you qualify anymore. So maybe they've gone for a different strategy in terms of the tyres, messed about with the pressures or done something like that because it is so hot and maybe they haven't gone the correct way for that. 63 WeatherTech car has had a nerf on the right rear and that's where the smoke's coming from. It's not engine smoke, it's rubber rub. And that will be, you'll be able to smell that, everyone who's behind him, notably Ben Keating in the 33, who's the car that is right in behind him. Actually, I think Ben might have already nipped through. Yes, he has. Nothing worse than the smell of a tyre that has been tortured by some carbon fibre. Alon goes through to complete a lap. Almost half a second away, and McNeil is struggling. Meantime, in GT Le Mans, Antonio Garcia having a cracking battle with Dirk Muller as they'll come to the line in a moment. They climb the hill. Garcia almost had a chance at the restart, but the car on the move at the moment seems to be Lawrence Van Tour, the 912 in fourth position, closing in on the second of the Fords. That's the 67 of Ryan Briscoe. Then behind that, there's a little gap to Oli Gavin. Then the two BMWs, the white BMW, number 25 is Alexander Sims, the black BMW, exactly the same car, both the same team, but running in different colors. As has happened uh, in the past, Jesse Kron in the 24, Nick Tandy, eighth position for Porsche in the GT Le Mans class, but separated by only three seconds, that field. In GT Daytona, Patrick Long has not been headed. Dominic Bauman now battled into second. Patrick Lindsay still third, and Madison Snow fourth. Catherine Legg started in, I think, seventh position, already up to fifth, and right in between her, cha right in behind the championship leader, she's second in that championship. Round the outside for the number 44. That's a bold move. That's John Potter at the Magnus Racing Audi, and tell you what, he's driving brilliantly. These last couple of weekends, he had a great run two weeks ago at Lime Rock. He was started last, was at the back of the field, fell 10 seconds back in the early stages because he had a braking problem on that car. He got his head around that, made some adjustments in the car, caught up to the rest of the field, did a really good opening stint. Andy Lally took over, finished in second place. Robbie Forley got through there as well. Uh, Robbie with Marcus Paltala as his teammate in the number 96 blue and yellow Turner BMW this weekend. Our best wishes to Bill Orbelin, who was doing a bit of home improvement on his new house when the, a conspiracy between uh, an unstable ladder and gravity caught him out. Bill, I hope you're feeling better, and we'll see you at VIR in a couple of weeks' time. Alon now by 1.2 seconds and puts in a 153.5. Which is a new lap record. The old one was 154.0. That was set by Stephen Simpson last season. So uh, already then on his effectively second flying lap, a new lap record for Robert Alon. Very impressive. Doing a really good job there, holding off these, uh, the string of DPI cars, the Acura, the Cadillac, the two Mazas are right there. Eric Curran in, in sixth position, the two Action Express cars. They changed positions from the start of the race. As John was talking about earlier on, they're separated by just one point coming into this weekend in the championship. It's number 31 car that uh, leads by one point over number five. They qualified in the other way around, but uh, now uh, they are back in that order again. More problems for Juan Montoya as he is falling, falling further That's down. A replay, I think, from the field. A while ago, oh, yes, you're right. You're yeah. absolutely 
Right, Jeremy, sorry, I took my head away. I could smell burning rubber and I strained my neck and that means only one thing. The 63 WeatherTech Ferrari is in the pit lane where our Continental Tire pit lane reporter, Shea Adam, is waiting. There's damage to the bumper. And, oh man, I hate that smell. Uh, there is a line on the inside of the right rear tire from where the bodywork was rubbing up against it. The right rear of the bumper was pushed in and the intricate little bits of carbon fiber on the diffuser that give it added downforce were actually rubbing up against the Continental Tire. They rip it off haphazardly, put a new Continental one. This one uh, does not have stickers on it, though, so it is new used rubber. But at least this tire with no straps on it, he's going to lose a lap unless he gets out. Now he gets going. He's going to be down the better part of the lap as the prototype field comes through now. And Cooper weaving back and forth violently, trying to get any bits of extra carbon dislodged. But uh, they need a yellow, and they need it now. The Continental that came off the car, that the inside looks as if somebody dragged a fork down the inside of it. Perfect description. Hello to Chelsea Jarvis tuning in. Uh, it's 10 to 8 back in the UK. Ollie is doing very well. Fourth position at the moment. Chelsea, nice to know that you're listening in. And uh, thanks for tweeting at IMSA Radio, as has Adam, who says Watkins Glen, Canadian Time Motorsport Park, Lime Rock Park, Road America, VIR. Is there another series in the world that visits so many great circuits consecutively as the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship? Answer. No, there isn't. And this is a great run. And don't forget, we go to Laguna Sega and Road Atlanta after those, so add them to the absolutely awesome circuit list. Into Nissan battle between the 24 and 25 BMW, and Jesse Kron comes out on top in the 24, takes that sixth position. Ollie Gavin ahead of them, then it's Van Tour in the 912 in fourth. Third is Ryan Briscoe in the 67. That's the Chip Ganassi GT, then Antonio Garcia, who's just 1.3 seconds in that Corvette behind Dirk Muller, who leads GT Le Mans. New fastest lap again last time around for Robert Alon, a 53.2. Last year's qualifying lap record was a 53.0. He's already within two tenths of a second now. That is pretty remarkable, particularly considering how warm it is this afternoon. But is he going to take it too much out of those tyres early on? He's pulled out two seconds over Ricky Taylor. Robert Alon in the lead of the race in number 85. Meantime, Juan Montoya has dropped 10, 11 seconds on the leader and now has Misha Goikberg in the number 99. That's the bright red. Uh, Bob Stallings, the uh, red dragon, as it's known. And Scott Sharp then behind there. Bit of struggle in that car. That looked to have a bit of understeer for Scott Sharp the last time I took a close look at that car, and that's not pleasant around here with the fast corners. John Bennett is 12th at the moment in the 54. It should be mentioned, Colin Brown, uh, as normal, qualified that car and was in third position on the grid. They, they elected to change drivers, which puts that car to the back of the prototype field. That has been their strategy. It is allowed, even if you're on pole position, uh, it's served them well uh, in the last race that they did that because they came out on top. GTD, still Porsche, Lexus, Porsche, Lamborghini, Acura, Acura, Mercedes and uh, John Potter in the 44 car. Pushing very hard indeed. 86, that's Catherine Legg and 63 under review. There's been an incident there. Justin Marks has just gone past his teammate. The 93 car had electrical problems earlier on. So that's how the back of the WeatherTech car got damaged then. That's, uh, I'm putting two and two together and making five, but don't forget, um, I live for all my life with a serving police officer and uh, I'm allowed to make those leaps of faith. Have you seen the evidence? <laughs> Under review at the moment. So Catherine Legg down to sixth at the moment. Ben Keating right in there as well. Meantime in GT Le Mans, the 25 BMW of Alexander Sims is looking at the back of Oli Gavin because his teammate, Jesse Krohn, has already gone through into fourth position. That's the black BMW into fifth position, excuse me. But right ahead of them is Lawrence Van Tour. There's a little bit of a gap. The top three... Ford, Chevy and Ford, 66.3 and 67, just opening up a little bit of a gap back to Lawrence Van Tour in the 912 Porsche. I think the Porsches actually will like it being hotter here. They wanted it either very hot or wet. 
and they've got hot. That tends to make the surface even more slippery and even more of an abrasive situation for the tyre wear. Uh, all of the GTLM cars have uh, turned best lap so far within, well, maybe three or four tenths of a second. Actually, the fastest of them, I think, is Alexander Sims in number 25 BMW, 204.5. But it's ridiculously close as ever in GTLM. But uh, meanwhile, up at the front of the field, Robert Alon is checking out. He's got 3.1 seconds now over Ricky Taylor, who's also a similar margin, a little bit more ahead of Renga van der Zander in third position. What are we thinking on stint length here, Jeremy? We started off with 2 hours and 40 minutes uh, on the clock. We've had a little bit of uh, a little bit of full course yellow, but we had two warm-up laps, two formation laps. I, I'm kind of thinking that that's probably balanced that out. What, 40 minutes, 45 yeah. minutes for the prototypes? Yeah, 40 minutes or so. and Maybe uh, 45 for no. the GTDs? Uh, yeah, a bit more for GTDs. They can do about 54 minutes. All right, 54. And yeah. GT Le Mans? Uh, well, 50? Who knows? Because yeah, uh, well, that's uh, around, uh, Similar, but, but uh, yeah, a little bit short of an hour, I think. Okay. So it's not easy just to break this race up uh, into regular pit stop lengths. Shit out of his oh. account at the time, pit lane reporter. Before the race began, uh, IMSA sat down and broke down based on the qualifying times what the expected stints would be for prototypes 19 to 21 laps, which is 36 to 40 minutes. GTLM should be between 26 and 28 laps, so every 53 to 58 minutes. And GTD, exactly the same, 26 to 28 laps, but that's every 55 to 60 minutes for that category. Yeah, because they do slightly longer laps times thank you Shea and uh, Shea will have asked everybody and uh, then done an average of what she was told um, I'm, I'm almost certain for that actually in in fairness the fuel consumption as well as fuel fill and fuel tank size is all part of balance of performance so that information I'm pretty sure Shea would have come from IMSA Technical and Jeff Carter did it yes it did yeah. many many thanks to Jeff for that because I can't do that kind of math um, you often forget, it's uh, easy to forget that uh, fuel flow and usage and fuel tank size and the time it takes to fill the, flan uh, fill the tank is part of balance of performance. You just think about the lap times. Uh, IMSA don't, they're taking a holistic view, data driven, and if yesterday's Continental Tire race was anything to go by, they have got it nailed down. Very, very impressed with what we saw yesterday. If you weren't watching live, you missed an absolute cracker. All of the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge races live on IMSA.tv and on the player at RadioLeMond.com. If you did see it, I'm not going to spoil it for those of you who haven't seen it yet, but watch and watch right till the end. That's all I'm saying. Simple as that. Uh, under two hours and 20 minutes to go. Jeremy Shaw, Shea Adam and John Hindorf. That's the team for IMSA Radio and IMSA TV, our broadcast centre is right at the start finish line which is where Robert Alon has just gone by he's already down into turn one here comes the chasing pack car 33 taking a penalty that's Ben Keating in sixth position incident responsibility with the 96 BMW as the lappery starts and Catherine Legg's just gonna lap back to the race leader Catherine Legg in seventh position in GT Daytona so Robert Alon uh, in just 10 laps and not all of that of green flag running carving his way through the top half of the GT Daytona field he's just put a lap on Ben Keating through to number six and next on his list will be Justin Marks in the red Acura now has Justin seen him as he goes to the right hand side just into turn number eight yes he has Alon clearing off at the moment Jeremy and this again is a very impressive display by Robert yeah it absolutely is the Californian here he's completely focused on what he's got to do here he knows he's got a fast car Simon Trummer he uh, he's his co-driver in this car from Switzerland similar age he's 29 years of age loving his racing over here. his first full-time season in North America as you see uh, see uh, here's this contact between number 33 and number 96 there uh, uh, yeah, nose of the 33, ushers the 96 car off the track there, so that was what the penalty was called. Bump by, and by, run. Yeah, by, by, by 96, and uh, unfortunately... No, I don't think there was intent no, there, Jeremy, and, no. but that's not, 
normally seeing it's intentional. And particularly it's for Ben Keeney, because no, he's, no, no. he's one of the more res most res respectful drivers out there. So he was just caught, caught a, a little unawares there of how early the number 96 car braked. Yeah. But it's just like on the road, you can't just run into the back of someone. Ben Keating heads to pit lane to take his drive through. No stop, just to drive through. Remember, there is another incident being looked at. Catherine Legg, the 86, on the 63 Ferrari. And we'll give you news of that as soon as we get it from race control. But remember, the Ferrari had damage to the right rear that required that to come in for a pit stop because the bodywork was rubbing on the right rear Continental tyre. Fabulous opening for Robert Alon, who's pulled out four seconds on Ricky Taylor in an accurate Team Penske prototype. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, isn't it, really, to think about it? It's impressive. Uh, and he, and he's, the other and thing by far, by the way, Jeremy, uh, sorry, but by far, Robert Alon and that 85 JDC Miller yeah. uh, car, uh, by far the best yeah. uh, at the moment of the the global p2 cars that's exactly what i was going to say he's 20 seconds clear of the rest of those guys 20 seconds yeah okay they don't have the, mo the, the most of the global cars have pro-am driver lines including including robert Alon and simon summer really uh and so the the pro isn't yet at the wheel of the car in, in any of the other ones but still it's a very very impressive effort we'll see this next year of course as the uh, wow. dpis are going to be allowed to be sped up to their original speed yeah. and the double UE or the uh, LMP2 cars will race in a separate category yeah but I'm hearing that there's not going to be they're not going to be speed up that much it's not as if they're going to be seconds faster is what I'm hearing anyhow I heard 80% was what they were Eight. going to be given back okay. is one of the numbers that well that was from one of the DPI teams who feels that's how much that uh, they would they have been they have lost in the last season and a half well we're, we're setting we're setting you like records let's let me put it that way yeah well and we'll be setting them everywhere next year i reckon for a number of different reasons in all the classes robert alon has pulled out five seconds golden era i think isn't it oh right it is look at the two mazas they're absolutely nose to tail across the line here comes the number two scott sharp he's got michi goitberg right ahead of him in the number 99 gains court and the two Masters are challenging each other going into the first corner and that looked to me as though Harry Tinknell had a little bit of a go there but couldn't get by Ollie Jarvis Ollie's wife Chelsea on the Norfolk coast and the east of England been enjoying some lovely weather in the UK over the summer months and she's tuned in watching and listening ollie absolutely loving this but neither ollie or harry having been to this track before and they have taken to it as if it i mean as if they'd been here every day for the last seven months proper circuits loved by proper drivers and producing proper racing Oops. and misha koikberg makes it a mistake down at turn number five that downhill left-hander or breaking downhill into the left-hander and that is a mistake that has given Scott Sharp 10th position. Shea Adam, Nick Tandy is eight seconds away from his class leader and that puts him in eighth position. Any movement down there? Yep, they're on the wall. They've got the pit board down and ready to go for when Nick Tandy comes in the pit lane. New Michelin tires ready to go on that car as well as fuel, but no Patrick Pile as of now. I can only think that they tried something on the tire front at the start of the race and it hasn't worked for them. The Vantour car is under pressure in fourth place, the 912 from Jesse Krog. Oh, there's a touch! Cooper McNeil and the one of the Fords that was going by him. I think that was Ryan Briscoe's car down into turn one as Tandy does indeed head to the pit lane and a huge piece of bodywork has come off the 67. It was Ryan Briscoe's car behind the rear wheel. It's taken the light out. There's a one of the electrical cables hanging down and Cooper McNeil having been virtually passed uh, misjudged his turn in and has clipped the back of the 67 car causing significant damage to the area behind the wheel very good save by Ryan Briscoe actually not to lose any time there going into the ultra quick turn one don't think it's damaged the diffuser 
it's just the bodywork behind the rear wheel right up to where the beautifully shaped rear light is now one thing about that rear light as nick tandy re rejoins from the pit lane having made his pit stop and it's a long enough in our porsche keys to the race a long lap can be a blessing or a curse we said it's a blessing for nick tandy because he's back out having made the tactical or the engineering decision without losing a lap to his class leader the, the ford rear light i was just about to say it's a thing of beauty because not only is it a light for a rear marker light and of course the brake lights but inside it is a little vortex generator that helps take air out from underneath the engine cover and behind the back wheels and the reason it spins the air is so it doesn't interfere with the rear aerodynamics on the wing beautiful piece of design on that car our leader caught up in traffic yeah and he's four seconds nearly five seconds are gone yeah uh, and the reason for that is now, he's now got to work his way through the gt11 cars it's a lot more difficult than working his way through the uh gtd cars well it was nearly five seconds it's now half a second as ricky taylor has carved through the traffic robert along goes through turn one the debris from the ford by the way was hit by a porsche i think it was van Tour that hit it it was and it's cost him a position actually uh, a couple of positions because Ollie Gavin and Alexander Sims has gone through as he swerved to avoid the the debris from the Ford which he didn't but what he has done is he's nosed that off the track so it's not now a danger to anyone else but I just wonder what effect that's having on the back of the Ford the good news for that Ford is that it isn't the diffuser that has been damaged because that is an integral part of the performance of these GT Le Mans cars. Leaders are right in behind Briscoe now, heading down towards turn eight, and they are right together as well as right behind Briscoe down to the inside. They go through turn eight. Briscoe takes actually more speed through turn eight than either of the two prototypes fighting for the lead. This is a real test now for Robert Alon. He's uh, been very, very sensible so far. He's not pushing the issue. He's being patient. It's exactly what he's got to do. He knows he's got a fast car. He knows he's got a fast co-driver. So he can't afford to take any, any. Uh, big chances he's doing a really really good job and uh, by the way the number five and 31 cars we talked about those earlier on that's the order in which they started the race they then switched the 31 was ahead of number five that changed a couple of laps ago Joao Barbosa has made the move on Eric Curran and very quickly pulled away let's go to share Adam for an update on this continental tire pit lane report Minimum drive time to get the Truman Award, which a few of our prototype drivers are after, is 30 minutes for today, which means that John Bennett's driving time is almost up, and Colin Brown is up on the wall for the 54 Corrado Sports Orica. He will be getting in soon. I do not see the same action going on down at the Red Dragon, the gates of number 99, of which Misha Goikberg is also competing. Let's take a Cadillac race update with that half an hour done in the race in GT Daytona. Patrick Long 24 leads. 24 car. Sorry, excuse me, John. Yeah, uh, 24 car has dropped way down. Yes, Ikron, you're quite correct. In GT Le Mans, down to seventh position. And in GT Le Mans, and only behind him now is Nick Tandy. Hmm. I, I think that Ryan Briscoe moved over on Cooper McNeil. Looked like he thought he cleared him when he was trying to get back onto the racing line. Eric Curran has come into the pits. Uh, John Bennett has uh, did that is also in the pit lane as reported let me get through this uh, Cadillac race update and then we'll go to Shea to find out what's happening on the pit stop Pat Long leads GT Daytona by a couple of seconds from Dominic Bauman in the 14 so Porsche 58 uh, Lexus 14 Pat Lindsay and uh, Patrick Lindsay in the 73 Porsche in third oh big off for the Ferrari huge off for the Ferrari just after the kink that's the 51 car that's gone around and the pits are closed. So these guys have got their pit stop done. And I'm not going to get the Cadillac race up there done. Francesco Piovanati has been off the circuit and into the wall. He's facing the wrong direction in the tricolore coloured Ferrari from Spirit of Race. GT Le Mans on the Cadillac race update is 66 Ford, 3 Chevy and 67 Ryan Briscoe. And at the top of the field, Robert Alon leads from Ricky Taylor, 85 from seven with Renger van der Zander in third, then the two Mazdas, and we have a full course yellow. Yeah, and it's incredible, isn't it? Number 54 car, they have they have the uh, 
the, the, let's say they call the strategies perfectly okay let's put it that way there's a big off there for Pio Benetti here got on the grass on the exit of the kink spun around it wasn't nearly as big of an accident we've seen over the, this weekend so far but still going to cause quite a bit of, bit of damage to that to number 51 car Shale give me a quick rundown uh, from the Continental Tire pit lane report of uh, what uh, went on with those two pit callers who got in before the pits were closed fuel tires and Colin Brown installed into that core auto sports number 54 the car that was the last time that we raced prototypes, which was at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, and it was fuel tires and Felipe Nasser for the number 31 wheel and engineering Cadillac. They were not even interested in the damage to the right rear of that car. Thank you, Shea. Shea Adam, full course caution. We'll have, we'll uh, take this opportunity to say good afternoon to Travis Roffler from Continental Tire. It's the Continental Tire Road Race Showcase. Did you did you plan that? What was that? What was that about? We managed to. There's so much action, and at the moment you come in, we've got Francesco facing the wrong direction and causing a traffic jam on the back straight. I think he is going to get going again. Travis, welcome, and uh, thanks for being here this weekend. What a season we've had so far. It's been a fantastic season. Yeah, I called that. I called that caution because everybody knows I like to talk. So <laughs> we threw a caution out there so I can get a lot of words in while I got you guys. Uh, Travis, uh, it's the end of the relationship uh, with IMSA at the end of this year. It's been a, a fantastic time for sports car racing. What has Continental got out of it? Well, you know, development is part of it, but it's also the fan base out here. You know, it's really exposing the brand, you know, being a, uh, a German company over in Germany, very, very well known over in uh, the European communities, but maybe not so well known over here eight, nine years ago when we started this foray. And, you know, sports car racing is such a cool sport in the fact that, you know, these cars actually look like street cars. They look like the cars that we drive every day, many of them. I know not too many of us get to drive Ferraris every day, but if a lot me. of these cars, especially in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge Race Series, uh, you know, those cars are everyday cars. You take a class like ST now going into uh, TCR, you know, you take that, that uh, car and you just put a roll cage in, a little bigger brakes, and we're going out and racing. And it's such grassroots and it allows us to connect with sports car fans and with real race fans that, that uh, they can really aspire to, to one day even race a car. Uh, uh, what, is, what have we have, as consumers of Continental Tires got out of it in that case? Yeah, we, when we, I think last year, we, we went over the Extreme Contact Sport, our new summer performance tires, and we hired or brought in five IMSA drivers to, to really help us tune and test that tire and bring out what we see out on the track with this Extreme Contact DR that we run in the series out here and bring a lot of attributes of that tire in its dry performance and it's obviously with our wet tires and our wet performance, uh, which is where we have a pre uh, prevalent uh, position in, in market testing on street tires in the wet. So uh, what we learn out here in compounding and construction really takes it back to the street and all of those ideas and concepts were incorporated in the new extreme contact sport. Where are the new challenges? Where are the next challenges for, for tires? It's, it's something that many of us as, as motorists actually rather take for granted, just the round black things on each corner. But down through the last 100 and odd years since motoring started, the, that technology has changed markedly and continues to change. Yeah, I think you and I have spoke about it before, and you know, Continental is more than just a tire company. We're an automotive systems company, so these cars now, whether you're talking about the powertrain, whether it's going to be electric, whether it's going to be still remain uh, combustion and and gas powered, uh, you know, where that stands to be, electricity is uh, is a big thing that we work on, and electric cars, and of course, the the 800 pound gorilla is the autonomous car, the car that's going to drive itself, and. You know, we're leading some of the 4 for t for commuting. I think everybody, you know, we as oh, passionate. there's plenty of drives that I'd rather not be doing, but I, I'd quite like, I still quite like driving, but there's times when I think I'd really like to just get in the back and have a snooze or do some emails or whatever. We all sit in, at least any of us that live in a city of any size, sit in traffic. Oh, and so if there's a way for that idea. car to get us through our daily commute, you know, I'm, I'm obviously a big enthusiast and a, a huge race car fan, so... Uh, I love the joy of driving a car on a good, you know, up here in Elkhart Lake. You can go find some really windy roads that are fantastic to drive and enjoy the performance of a car. So uh, where, where that takes us in tire technology, you know, the electric cars have really skinny, tall tires on them. They're not the big, wide, fat yeah. tires that we got out here. 
uh, in performance and laying down all this huge horsepower these race cars put out. But so it's a different if it's a it's a different set of goals and criteria that we're looking forward to the future. But I think our CEO said one time uh, last year, there's not a car produced in the world that doesn't have a continental part on it. Not necessarily a tire. No. But that does not have a, a produced part by Continental, either on the automotive system side or on the tire side, produced in the world. So well, I only found out recently that you guys make uh, audio head units, and there's a, a one that you guys do that's going to look absolutely fantastic in my, 96, my old 968 Porsche because it's got a nice retro look to it. And I'm about to order one from the guys at uh, Continental VDO in the UK. At UK when I get back. Travis, thank you for everything that you've done for sports car racing in IMSA and particularly for IMSA Radio. It's been an absolute pleasure and we'll see you again before the end we of the year. We love you guys, man. Just keep doing what you do. You guys are awesome and we love everything you guys do and we're always here for you. Uh, appropriate you. love. We've just had a lot of pit stops, so let's go down to our Continental Tire Pit Lane reporter, Shea Adam, for an update. We love you too, Travis. A lot of pit stops. I'll tell you about the ones that didn't change drivers because everybody else who came down did. Uh, the pole sitting car, the 85, Robert Alon, stayed in that machine. They got fuel and tires on the banana boat, but he lost a ton of positions as a lot of people did shorter fuel stops. Uh, both of the Penske Acuras kept their starting drivers in, so it's still Montoya and the six and it is still Ricky Taylor in the seven. It was driver changes up and down the field for GTLM, both of the Porsches, both of the BMWs I saw, both of the Corvettes and both of the Fords. And uh, another one of the quick stops was from the number five. So the sister car to the car that now leads a race, which is the 31 Willen Engineering Cadillac. Yeah, the two cars that made their pit stops right before the course repaired, number 31, number 54, well, they, they will vault all the way to the front of the field. So uh, great news for the championship leaders, of course, that's Felipe Nasser at the wheel of number 31 car. Also Colin Brown now in the wheel of number 54. He's the guy who was on pole position for each of the last two races. They elected to change starting drivers, so they went to the back of the field. Still don't like that strategy, but they did it again here. <laughs> but thankfully, they didn't qualify on the pole to make up, mess up my stats. Uh, but uh, that car is now riding contention. It's all about you. It's all, yeah, about you all about me. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, once again, great strategy by that team. They they fulfilled their 45 minutes for for John Bennett. They get him out of the car, get Colin Brown in there, and now they're going to race to the end. And they got a super fast car, and that is going to be one to watch again. We've seen how fast the Orica Gibson is because Robert Alon dominated pretty much the opening stages of this race. Colin Brown, can Colin Brown take it on from here? Hello to Gareth Evans, uh, working, he says, in inverted commas, in the shed and being entertained by some great uh, racing. He's just tweeted in at IMSA Radio. And don't forget, you can get in touch with us here at the IMSA Broadcast Centre by doing that. We've got the uh, Twitter open and looking at that on the screen. Shit, Adam, before that, uh, those cars came in, of course, we did have the Ferrari causing the caution, and they must have come into a closed pit, did they? They did. Uh, they worked we on the car spinning in closed the wheels pits. as well, to be honest. That was the other thing I was going to say. The wheels were spinning. Uh, well, the delaminated left rear wheel was spinning, which was quite scary until they told him to just shut the car off. But they did just send Francesco back out of the pit lane, so he'll be making a couple more trips back in for penalties, but at least that car making their second start of the year, the first coming Watkins Glen, they're at least not done with their day yet. Thank you, Shea. Uh, the pits are open for GT Daytona. The, the reason, by the way, that the prototypes and the GT Le Mans cars come in together is that they are designated the, pro the, the, the professional classes, so they're coming together, and then the pro-am classes come in after that. I wonder if there'll be any takers for GT Daytona. Uh, Looks like Pat Long is already making his way into the pit lane. He's been followed in they'll by all, all the Lexus in second. Yeah. There's a couple that have stayed out. I, don't I think can so. see. Now, who was that further down? Uh, did John, Potter, uh, John Potter stayed out. John Potter stayed out. The great Audi. Shea Adam has a Continental Tire pit lane update as the GT field approaches. And the 86 Acura stayed out too, John. Uh, those GTD cars as well as the 63 of Cooper McNeil. He's got a little bit more fuel. Remember, came in to fix the crash damage. So the 58 comes in. That will be Patrick Long getting out. Christina Nielsen getting in for the Park Place Motorsport car. The 73 comes in. Fuel and tires. Patrick Lindsay staying behind the wheel. Same story for the 14 Lexus. Fuel and tires, but still Dominic Bauman. In the 93 Acura, they are doing fuel and tires. Remember, this is the car that had the electrical gremlin this morning. For the 48 uh, Lamborghini, the driver's side door is open, but I don't 
think that Brian Sellers is getting in just yet. I think he's giving Madison an extra water bottle. Although, remember, he told us before the race that it was his turn to do a double stint. He's not getting behind the wheel of that one just yet. The 33 Mercedes, the one that was completely rebuilt earlier in the week, that is getting fuel and tires as well as the 96 Turner Motorsport BMW. Our pole sitter came in first in the number 58 Porsche. It will leave at least second, no, third, because it was the 93 Acura that gets out first. And then it was great pit work by the Paul Miller Racing Crew to get the Lamborghini out of the pit lane second. Yeah, we. We. Huge shuffle around there. Yeah, now. During those pit stops. So I mean, Catherine Lake stayed out in the Acura number 86. John Potter stayed out in the uh, dark gray and green Audi. And Cooper McNeil, who had lost a lot of ground. I thought he'd fallen off the lead lap, but he must not have in class. Not in class, no. No. So he's got back around to come back into third position. So And they've got more fuel, of course, because they did stop to fix that accident damage. And so then it will be the BMW and the 96, I think, and then the 48. Now, Elio Castro, I need to go back down to Shea just for a, a moment. Uh, the seven Acura Team Penske car share. Did we get a driver change on there? Uh, Elio Castro Neves jumping into the seven car share? Uh, no, I didn't see any driver change going on for either of the Penske's, but I will walk down to their pit box and make sure that Ricky's not sitting on it. Thank you very L much indeed. Lost a lot of ground in that pit stop, so, and the, 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 bi the big uh, gainer there was number 77 car. That went from uh, fourth place before the pit stops to, well, uh, the, uh, the guys had all pitted, effectively the lead. He's behind in third place now is number 77. Tristan Nunez now at the wheel of that car. Ahead of him only is Felipe Nazar, number 31, Colin Brown, 54. They didn't pit under the caution because they'd made their stop right before that. Uh, Philippe Albuquerque, a great pit stop as usual for number five team. So that, that gets him up into the uh, fourth position. As a number 52 car, that's got the wave around. That uh, was a lap off the pace because of its uh, early dip, dip position in the gravel trap down at turn 14. So he was able to get the, uh, when everybody else pitted, it got himself back on the lead lap. He got the wave around, it can now make its pit stop and then we'll, re we'll re rejoin at the tail end of the lead lap. So we've now got all 13 prototypes back on the lead lap. The Z06 safety car is pulling away. It gives me a chance to go back to the pit lane for a couple of updates and this Continental Tire pit lane report, Shea? Might not have been a fast stop for the number seven Acura Team Penske, but it was definitely fast driver change because by the time I looked down to that end of pit lane, they were still changing the tires, but the driver's side door was closed. It is Ricky Taylor sitting on the pit box now, which means Elio is behind the wheel. It was fuel only for the number 93 MSR Acura, so they played their cards right to get ahead of championship rival team, Paul Miller Racing, on track position. And we are expecting Magnus to come back in the pit lane now. We'll come into the pit lane, even though the green flag is out. And we are back to green flag racing. Dave Harris says, it's been 10 years since I watched my first mixed class race at Road America for LMS on the Speed Channel. I remember being quite confused about being multiple races happening at once. I wouldn't have it any other way now. And we're back to green flag racing. The 52 didn't get out of the pit lane before the leaders came by, so they're not gonna get that lap back. They got to the end of the pit lane and here comes everyone else from GT Daytona. Catherine Leg, John Potter, and the Cooper McNeil Ferrari, they're all coming in, and the 50 and the 51 car as well. This is a minimum time strategy call here as they come through to make their pit stops. Philippe Nazar now leads the motor race in the number 31, the Whelan Cadillac from Colin Brown in second. Tristan Nunes in third, huge shakeup. Give you a rundown in two or three minutes time and off for Elio Castro Neves coming out of turn number seven. Check that six. And he rejoins right in front of the GT Le Mans field. Now, did he get a little helping nudge there from Ryan DL who he was having a good battle with in his Acura his, team Penske? Yeah, and or his teammate. Because oh, Montoya was there as well, yeah, you're right, Jeremy. Three cars on the pit lane from GTD who were looking for drive time, all took fuel, tyres and of course changed their driver. Here comes a fired up Castro Neves through the kink, 
goes past the Ford 7 and 22. It was Pipo Durrani who gave a little helping nudge to the number seven Acura. That's not the first time that they've come together this year. And that is being looked at by race control. Uh, in GT Le Mans, from last to first, Nick Tandy, who took the early stop, remember, out of sequence. The 911 portion now leads and has benefited from that full course caution. Has four laps fewer in terms of fuel mileage in the car, but he's got two seconds lead on the rest of the GT Le Mans field, which is headed by Dirk Muller. Back into the pit lane, Robert Alon. Now, this cannot be a scheduled stop share. I'm investigating right now, John. I think it might be a penalty for Robert Alon. Oh, oh really? OK, I can check that. Let's uh, see what the situation is. Uh, we had the drive through earlier on for the 33. Not sure whether that was actually uh, taken before we went full course yellow. That was Ben Keating for the the little nudge and Shea tells me that it was and no I'm not seeing that I'm not seeing that so I don't know why that car excessive wheel spin is what I'm being told from Shea Adam that's not on the timing screen and the uh, and the uh, the monitor for the race control messages is that correct Shea? That's Ex what uh, the lead pit lane official Johnny Knotts has just confirmed to me yes. Wow okay. Ugh, costly so error. And more contact, more contact. The 73 Park Place Porsche. Patrick Lindsay still at the wheel of that, right in behind our championship leader. And also in the mix there is the Lexus of Dominic Bauman, who was slow for a moment. No action for the 7 and 22. That was the Elio Castro Nevis and Pipo Durrani incident there. Deemed a racing incident. Ooh, that's going to get. Elio's dander up, isn't it? He won't like being nudged round turn six, but looked at and a very, very quick decision made by race control. That's good news for everybody. We move on from that. Here's the 85 car, Robert Alon now having to fight his way through the battle at the front of GT Daytona, which is led by Justin Marks in the Acura. The 93 car has Madison Snow in the number 48, Paul Miller racing. Lamborghini, championship leader in second, Robbie Foley for Turner Motorsport. What a last few races they've had. 96 BMW in third, then the dark grey Porsche for Patrick Lindsay, then the chrome blue Alexis, which heads to the pit lane. Lexus in the pit lane then for Dominic Bauman. The 15 car didn't make the start after a brake failure and a huge incident down at turn eight in warm up this morning for Yorkshireman. Jack Hawksworth, Alon has passed that lead battle. Christina Nielsen now up into fourth position in the 58 Porsche, with Ben Keating having served his penalty back in the fifth. And Dominic Bauman is with our Continental Tire pit lane reporter, Shea Adam. It will be a driver change for this Lexus and fuel only while the driver change is taking place. When they came in the first time, the drive, minimum drive time had not elapsed, so Dominic Bauman had to stay behind the wheel of the car. The fuel probe is out. Now they are just losing time, getting Kyle Marcelli strapped in behind the wheel of this 14 Lexus. This is the car that won the race at Mid-Ohio in GTD. Kyle still getting his belts down. He's being told to go, and he does just that. The crew members waving their arms a little bit, going, why did we pull me? Why do we pull Dominic out now? A bit curious. OK. Well, uh, with, what, an hour and 48 minutes to go, 108 minutes, I reckon they're going to be close to going to the end with just one more stop. Maybe there's some kind of back timing going on. Two hours and 40 minutes is a tricky length for all of these guys, it's not an exact split for the fuel numbers. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. All the way down to Ben Keating from Justin Marks. That's the GTD train. 24 wheels of GT Daytona action heading to Canada Corner. Patrick Lindsay just pulling out of line for a moment, seeing if he could find an advantage. But it's Madison Snow putting the pressure on the leader in class, the two mid-engined cars from the rear-engine Porsche of Patrick Lindsay, from the front-engine BMW of Robbie Foley. 
Then Christina Nielsen right in the mix in the right motorsport number 58. And Madison's got a great run out the final corner. He's right up behind the NSX. There's barely any movement. Oh, the NSX just beginning to pull away as they cross the line and head down towards the first corner. Justin Marks feels the need to pull left for a moment, but the fastest car in a straight line was the Porsche and pulled up a huge amount on those two leaders. And they've got together coming into the first corner and Madison Stoke goes immediately down to the right hand side he's trying to force his way through we said in the Porsche case the race be decisive if you're going to overtake and Snow has and Patrick Lindsay follows him through magnificent stuff from the Porsche driver that was the decisive manoeuvre that we talked about in the Porsche keys to the race. Both of those, and Lindsay goes for the lead. Lindsay's dragging around the outside. I said the Porsche had good straight line speed. He's on the wrong side for turn five. May have to drop back in as Madison Snow had to defend from Justin Marks and then attack Patrick Lindsay. Magnificent stuff. GT Daytona at its very, very best. Superb, absolutely superb. And what's uh, interesting about that is number 73 car lost ground in that round of pit stops, but boy, it's making up hand over fist, isn't it? Absolutely flying is Patrick Lindsay. Mistake by the 96 car. And Robbie Forley will lose a position or two. Christina Nielsen's already gone through. Can Ben Keating take advantage as well not at the moment they're at the carousel oh dear this is going to be another one of those races where i barely get a breath in for the next hour and 45 minutes if at any stage you hear a thud that's me falling over from lack of oxygen really have to have a word with some of these drivers and tell them that we need to have light and shade in these races so i've got to come down a little bit otherwise i get to the stage where only bats and dolphins can hear what I'm talking about. It's an extraordinary feeling to be watching this trackside here. Now the GT uh, Daytona battle has prototypes pulling their way through in the shape of Ryan DL and people Durrani in the green and black ESM cars with right in behind them now Juan Montoya. Stephen Simpson is in the Gaines Cup. Bob Stallings, Red Dragon number 99. He's right on the tail there. These are four cars that are battling for seventh position down in the overall and in the prototype category. Elio Castro Nevis is about another seven and a half seconds further back. Meantime, Christina Nielsen going past Justin Marks and up into third position. The Porsches are super quick in a straight line this today. And Christina Nielsen has gone through into turn one. So GT Daytona now has Madison Snow, championship leader, leading in the V10 Lamborghini, the number 48 car, red, black, silver. Patrick Lindsay, dark grey with the red stripes of Park Place, the 73 Porsche in second. Christina Nielsen, red and right, white, number 58, right motorsport Porsche in third position. Meantime change tack a little bit and talk about GT Le Mans as we run through our Cadillac race update. Nick Tandy leads in 13th position overall. He's got uh, almost three seconds on Dirk Muller in the 66 Ford behind him. is his teammate Richard Westbrook in the 67 Ford. But that's about three seconds further back. And then it's Felipe in the 25, the white BMW. The four of Tommy Milner in the four Corvette. The three of Jan Magnussen riding high in the championship as well and they're all separated by about a second and a half John Edwards in the black 24 BMW is next up and he's right there and Earl Bamber now has the Porsche bookending the GT Le Mans field with 8.3 seconds between first and eighth Earl Bamber about a second away from the train of cars ahead of him and finally in our Cadillac race update with one hour and 43 minutes to go. Philippe Nasser leads barely half a second between himself in the 31 bright red Whelan Cadillac. Colin Brown in second in the white tangerine and black Orica with the Gibson V8 engine. Then Philippe Albuquerque in the five Cadillac. That's the Team Carlo. That's the dark grey uh, the dark grey Mustang sampling car. They're both run by Action Express. And those three cars at the front of the field, 1.1 second. Then the two Mazdas, and Harry Tinknell has got ahead of Tristan Nunes. 55 from 77, and the top six is made up by another Cadillac. This time the number 10, the glossy black Wayne Taylor Racing Konica Minolta car, Renga van der Zander, 
in sixth position. Two pit callers, Justin Marks out of the battle at the front of GTD, and I think I saw the 51 Spirit of Race Ferrari as well. Share Adam. The number 93 is significant because it will be a driver change. Fuel, tires, and Lawson Oshabak installed into this red Acura, the number 93. They're doing the left side tires first, running around to come and do the right front. And the driver change going perfectly on time so far. The door is still open as Lawson gets his belts done. They put up the window net, the fuel probe comes out, car comes off the air jacks. Door shuts and Lawson is cleared to leave. Uh, just a correction on earlier, John. The penalty for the 85 was hitting a tire on the pit lane. It hit the tire of the 51, the car that was called for excessive wheel spin. So we had two penalties called at once for cars in two subsequent pit boxes. Ah, pit equipment, thank you. Carol Brink has just tweeted. Here at IMSA really, she says, I always seem to watch IMSA races with my fingers over my eyes, even when I'm not watching and just listening to IMSA radio's commentary. Thank you, Carol, over there in Monterey, on the left-hand coast. You're having a nice day over there. So, that 85 uh, pit equipment call and the 51 excessive wheel spin, so two different pit penalties called there. Thank you to Shea for that. Phewey, and thanks to uh, Johnny Knotts, our senior IMSA pit lane official. We had uh, Scott Atherton answering questions earlier on in the race weekend. Thanks to him for that on Ask Atherton. That's available at RadioLamont.com, by the way, on the front page. You can listen on demand or download it. It's a feature of IMSA that uh, their senior management and their officials make themselves available to answer questions. And we had a query about whether what you had to do to get a quote unquote spare car in the race. And Jeff Carter, one of the top men at the technical side of IMSA, made himself Im immediately available as Ben Keating comes into the pit lane in the 33 Riley Technologies AMG. And Shea Adam has this kind of time for their report. Perfect transition. Speaking of spare cars that have been recently rebuilt, the number 33 Mercedes will be taken over by Jerome Blake and a guy who had two laps in the old car before the crash happened, and the team had to work tirelessly all through the night to get this rebuilt. That is the sound of the Mercedes engine leaving the pit box after a great stop. And Bill Riley told us in the countdown to green that they were going to go to Seepkins. Afterwards, they just earned it. Robert Alon is in the gravel at Canada Corner. The 85 car losing it down there, and I don't think he's got enough purchase to get out. For a moment, Jeremy, I thought he was going to get no. Back wheels are now spinning, and he's not coming out of there. The pits are closed, and we've gone full course caution. Yeah, we have, and uh, oh, what a shame. It's all gone wrong, hasn't it, for that number 85 car? Made an error in the pit stop, now they made an error out on the racetrack, and this is going to be very costly. What a shame. Let's see what happened here. He's, uh, that's interesting. Oh, you've got to help. Okay, I beg your pardon. Beg your pardon, number 93 car then uh, braking. Using uh, oh. use use number 85 car as a brake. That's very bizarre. Yeah, not at all Robert Alon's fault. No, that one, that was no, Lawson okay. Ashenbach misjudging his braking. Oh, and there was enough forward momentum from the 85 car, but the step coming out of the gravel trap is so steep there that the front splitter actually caught on it and arrested his movement. Now, Lawson Ashenbach, that was not, I'm sure, deliberate, but the GT cars nowadays, with the ABS, of course, break very, very late into the corners, particularly down at Canada Corner, where it's actually pretty uh, uneven down there. And uh, I wonder if that just caught him out. Well, oh, Ashenbach, maybe there'd been a little bit of argy-bargy further round the lap because uh, Ashenbach had just come out of the a carousel. Along goes through, that's all fine, into the braking area. Ooh, now. I mean, we've seen some, we've seen some, that car's had some, some electrical problems this weekend. Well, I. Uh, and I'm wondering whether it's recurring there because we've seen several cars, ha in particularly GT3 cars, having ABS problems this weekend. Whether that's another one, I don't know. It's happened to the number 33 car, which is all different cars. That was, the number 33, of course, is a Mercedes. We saw number 51 
Uh, Ferrari having the same problem at that same corner. This morning we had number 14, 15 Lexus having the same problem as well. Maybe it's the same because Lawson Aschenbach uh, doesn't do what that looked Something like. Something had happened in the carousel because it looked to me as though Aschenbach had just nipped by the 85. Uh, although that car was just coming out of the pits, wasn't it? So, or had just come out the previous lap. Uh, Robert Alon is now moving, albeit very slowly. I'd be worried about the uh, front of that car where it hit the step and whether there's any damage to the underbody there. There's a bit of aero work that isn't exactly as it came out of the Orica factory at Paul Ricard. And I think the nose is slightly deranged as well. The pits are closed. Stay out, stay out, stay out. Yes, he got the message barely. Obviously tuned into IMSA Radio on XM Sirius broadcasting this weekend from Road America and every weekend from the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship right through to what is going to be a thrilling end to our season, I'm absolutely sure. Pass around is happening now. This allows cars to go past the safety car, which is relatively unusual but anyone who is caught between the overall leader and their class leader no be, be, yeah well yeah or the safety car the sorry class. yes between yeah between yeah. the safety car and their class leader thank you jeremy that's an important distinction um, is allowed to drive past the safety car and join the back of the queue effectively that gives them their class lap back just Let's go down to Shea Adam for an update on the temperatures, courtesy of our colleagues at Michelin. It is 89 ambient, so in the air, but the track temperature is 105. We're about 35 degrees cooler than it was at Watkins Glen. It's practically winter. And in the IMSA Broadcast Centre, it's a chilly 72 degrees Fahrenheit. I think it's moment. negative three in the booth, actually. It was snowing the other day. So let's have a look before anybody decides to use or not to use uh, the opportunity to pit here as they are behind the safety car. Let's take another Cadillac race update at the front of the field. It's a Cadillac leading the 31 wheel and sponsored car. Bright red 31 missing a chunk of right rear bodywork from earlier on in the race. Hasn't seemed to slow it down. Philippe Nasser, Philippe Nasser behind the wheel of that car. Colin Brown. What momentum the 54 core Autosport team have. And again, they've played their strategy to perfection. Second place for them, Philippe Albuquerque in the five car in third position. And that's how they'll come back to the green flag. Yeah, definitely seems like the 85 was struggling and had maybe lost the position to Aschenbach. Then gets by in the left-hander after the kink. Down into the braking area. It's an odd one. I don't think Robert Alon is the type of guy who brake tests somebody. So he looked like he braked in roughly the right place. And he's now as... Then he decided he wasn't coming back into the pit lane. But we are going back to green flag. GT Le Mans will start with Nick Tandy leading in the 911 from the 66 GTLM of Dirk Muller's Ford. Then the similar 67 car, GTD, Madison Snow Championship leader in the lead in the 48 Lamborghini from the 73 of Patrick Lindsay and the 58 Porsche of Christina Nielsen. And those two Porsches seem to be coming alive in the heat of the afternoon here at Road America. NASA jumped away to a three quarter of a second lead across the line and is pulling away in the bright red Cadillac. It does take the global P2 cars just a little longer to get heat into their tyres and there's a problem for Ford and it's the 67 car. This is the one, It's no it's not, it's the 66, it's got two rear lights. Now what's happened here? Sounds like the engine's still running for Dirk Murray, was in second position but He's not up to speed. He's on the back straight, heading towards turn five now. On the middle straight, should I say, behind the pits. I don't see damage on the car, but there's something very wrong with that Ford EcoBoost powered machine. 
three and a half litre V6. And he's coming in the back way to the pits. He's coming in the back way to the pits. So he's going straight to the paddock. This is something serious for number 66, Ford. And this is huge news. This is the championship leader. Ran across the rumble strips at turn one and then just didn't have any power, Jeremy. No, just going down the hill there. Just didn't seem to have any drive at all. There's no audio on board that uh, camera, but uh, that was really strange. I mean, it didn't look like anything was amiss there, but all of a sudden the car just uh, didn't pick up speed coming out of the corner going down the hill to three. Just one point, the gap between Joy Hand and Dirk Muller as far as the championship's concerned to Tonio Garcia and Jan Magnussen in the Chevy Corvette. They're sitting down in sixth position at the moment. And the Ford is making its way, rumbling, burbling its way. It's still got drive, but it's lost a lap because it didn't complete that lap. So that lap's going to be scrubbed. And it's heading straight to the pit awning. There's a traffic circle that it needs to get around to get in that. Official at the gate didn't stop the car at 9 12 coming in. Earl Bamba now 90 minutes to go. That's two 45 minute stints, isn't it? From here, Shea? yes, it is. And they were planning to bring him in uh, before any funny business happened out on track with the four. They're doing fuel and tires. Earl Bamba is in until the end of this race, at least he's expected to. These are new Michelin tires, they're shiny, they do not have the stickers on them, but they have never been on a car before. They're just changing the right side. The right front goes on now. No problem with the air gun. So there was no problem as with Lime Rock. Blue Heel done. Goodbye, Earl. Very good. I like the Dixie Chicks uh, reference there. So he is back out without losing a lap and will only need one pit stop in 45 minutes time or thereabouts to get him to the end of the flag. This has been a topsy-turvy race so far. Our Porsche keys to the race. Getting your fuel right and your tyres right. A part of that strategy is Justin Marks is back in the pit lane with the much troubled now NSX. Uh, the Ford, meantime, has come back to the pit box as we've got a penalty for Justin Marks. That's why he's in the pit lane. Incident responsibility with the 85. Uh, sorry, that's Lawson Aschenbach. That's Lawson Aschenbach, not Justin Marks. They did change drivers in that car. Uh, Shea Adam, I'm going to come back to you for this. Th this is very odd. The, have the, uh, the, they're looking in the driver's compartment and doing belts and things. What's going on with that 67 well, car? That's because they did a driver change, John. So Dirk right, Miller okay. is out and Joey Hand is in. They're looking at the right rear of the car around where the diffuser meets the wheel. But part of the advantage of being the championship leaders means that they get the first GTLM pit box. When the car came back, instead of driving to its garage, it came through the cut through, which is located at the exit. They pushed the car backwards, not engaging gear, did everything completely legally, and there's a mechanic in the wheel well behind the brake, so toward the suspension. Might have been a suspension breakage. We're just looking to see if there's anything bent down in that area. Um, they're taking something off of the right rear suspension. Yep, a bent A-arm. So they're putting a new one on. They're doing all this actually on the pit lane. There is a mechanic who is under the car. It was contacted the turn one curb. Now, the car is not up on any sort of jack stabilizers, and there is a mechanic underneath the car. So this technically should be a penalty because they did penalize a Ford for this in the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge race at Lime Rock, but they are able to do this work on the pit lane. That is quite amazing. Given the GTLM team, this car came into the weekend as the championship leader, was a pole sitter car for the third year in a row, and the mechanics are just putting on the final bolt. They're gonna have this thing back out here within a minute. Uh, that was riding the curb at turn one. We, as soon as we saw the replay from going over that, that was too much curb on the inside from the championship leader in GT Le Mans. And I thought it might have done some, might have done a problem with uh, something on the drive line. But I think what it is is a broken suspension or a bent suspension arm. Hello to Alan and Kelly McNish who are watching and listening, tweeting in at IMSA Radio. Your boy's doing nicely in fourth position, Mr. Tignall. Alan McNish looking after Harry's career. Benefiting, I'm sure, from Alan's knowledge of this track, despite the fact that uh, Harry 
hasn't been here before into fourth position and has just put Mazda number 55's best first sector of the race in last time around. He's only three quarters of a second away from a podium position right now. Yes, and, uh, bef and after the caution period, he'd be been behind both number 77 car and the 10. He overtook them both uh, and is now into the fourth position, as you say. Behind him is Tristan Nunes in the 77. The two Mazdas doing exactly as John Doonan had hoped in a circuit that means an awful lot to the man at the head of the Mazda Sport program. The two Mazda Team Yours cars then fourth and fifth position. Ahead of them, Philippe Albuquerque in third in the number five Mustang sampling Cadillac, the dark grey machine. In front of him, Colin Brown upholding the honours for the number 54, that's the core autosport team, also upholding the honour of the global LMP2 cars, but Philippe Nasser is just ahead of him, half a second ahead of him in the leading 31 bright red Whelan Cadillac. At IMSA Radio, if you want to get in touch with us, Ford 66 is out. Shea, Adam, did you see the part as it came off? I did. They threw it over the wall, actually. It looked uh, a bit more like a boomerang than it did an AR. Uh, but they did get it fixed. They did send it back out, so all is good. Has dropped laps, of course, because he didn't complete the lap that he'd started by coming in through the back way. And so now he's dropped well down. And that means we talked about this in Midweek Motorsport on Wednesday, Shea. The potential points swing between first and last in GTLM, first and eighth, is 12 points, and that car only had a one-point lead. That brings the next three cars, three teams, into contention for the championship lead. Which are the three Corvette, which is running where on track right now? The three Corvette, the 67 Ford GT, and then the 912, which was the furthest one back. So it really is an open battle at this point, as long as the 67 or the three doesn't win, the 912 stands a real shot. Well, yes, and they've already made a sneaky pit stop, I think. 66 will get the penalty, working under the car without Jack Stans. Adam saw that, and that will be a drive through. But it really doesn't matter for the 66 now. It's just getting that car to the end and making sure it's classified. It's only going to get eighth place points unless there are problems for anyone else. And that has a huge championship implication, not just for Joey Hand and Dirk Muller, who lead the championship, but also for Ford. They have uh, 230 points in the championship against Corvette's 219 and Porsche's 216. And that means that uh, at least one of their cars is only taking points for eighth position. On board here with uh, Harry Tinkler. Look through the windscreen there, all the bugs that are on there. The visibility and is not particularly good. And yeah, you, all sorts of crud on there. But he's running a super lap time. He's staying right with the uh, top three. So the top four, well, pretty much all the prototype to field is nose to tail. On that last lap, however, which is number 66, car turving, it's penalty. Number 99 of Stephen Simpson was able to get past Juan Pablo Montoya. So now the two Acuras, if you can believe it, are last in the field of cars on the, on the lead lap. The 85 and the 52 are both a lap down. But the six and the seven at the back of the field now. Yes. Which is amazing. And we were talking to Tim Sindrick earlier in the week up at Marion's, where all the cool kids hang out, clearly. And uh, there was a bit of, there was a little bit of uh, optimism in the uh, Penske, the Team Penske Acura ranks, but at the moment, those cars just don't have the pace. And, uh, well, I think the pace is there, but they lost they lost an awful lot of track position on that first round of pit stops, particularly number seven car. Number six car fell back on the track, but number seven well, Montoya car... Montoya's still in, uh, in that car yeah. as well. He's been in since the start. Right, and he struggled from the start. Number seven car was running really well. I mean, it was well clear of third position before we had that early caution period. Then it came out of the pits in eighth. And slipped uh, from there. It had, oh, it's, was that the one that was punted off the road? Yes, Which it was one? The second car. Uh, yes, yeah. correct. So that's it's now caught up uh, to the uh, 99 and the yeah, six. Yeah, that, that was seven seconds adrift. Yeah. But of course, we've had another full course yellow, so he has had the benefit of that. Philippe Nasser broken away all of a sudden into a one and a half second lead from Colin Brown in second, 31 from 54. The two. Uh, Nismo powered prototypes of ESM 
running in lockstep as they come through the field and both got held up and here's an opportunity for Stephen Simpson he goes past one of them may get the other one as well as they go to Canada corner tries round the outside he'll do the cutback as he comes to turn 13 that's a left-hander Simpson played that to perfection yeah, and he's flying remember I told, just said he but he just overtook the Acura can't see the Acura in that picture he's pulled well away and already split those two Nissans yeah, he saw the Porsche that they were coming up to put a lap on. The five ahead of the 54 in that lap as well as they uh, get through some traffic. So Colin Brown down to third position, 31 and five. The two Action Express cars. Well, it's been a tough week for the Action Express team. John Olsen leading light at Whelan. Died uh, earlier this week been with Whelan over 50 years of service and had uh, along with Sonny Whelan really changed the face of emergency lighting in that half century the team racing with heavy hearts this weekend but what a way to honor John first and second at the moment and that dark gray almost black Mustang sampling car now playing tail gunner to the bright red Wheel and engineering Cadillac that leads the race with 80 minutes to go. One hour and 20 minutes at Road Atlanta. We're live trackside every second of the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in 2018, live on IMSA Radio from the very first practice session of every race weekend. In from GTLM, fourth position, third position, excuse me. Jan Magnussen yeah. comes into the pit. No, he wasn't. He was yeah, further down than yeah, that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But he's coming in. 80 minutes. That's 240 minutes stints to go. That's one more pit stop after this one. Shea Adam is watching the stop. Driver change. It's Antonio Garcia's turn to play. He has not won at this track in IMSA competition. His best finish has been second, and they are doing fuel and tires on that Corvette as Antonio gets strapped into the car, and he loves the opportunity to go and fight for a win. It's been way too many seconds for their taste as nice big burnout in Antonio leaves. It's been almost a year since the three car has found victory lane, and the last time that they had a small fire in a practice, they went on to win. They had a small fire in practice this morning, John. What's going to happen? Well, hopefully no more, uh, no more issues. That's that guy. In comes Juan Montoya. Has not been a happy JPM this weekend. And Shea Adam is watching the Acura come to a stop with this Continental Tire Pit report. His driving time is done as Juan Montoya extracts himself quite nimbly from that number six Acura. And Dane Cameron hops in. He puts his seat insert in and then just sort of slides down the chute to get behind the wheel of this beautiful white car. They are doing the left rear tire and the right front. That's all they got left to do, having changed the other two already. Waiting on fuel, a windshield tear off comes off. The driver's door goes down and beautifully executed because all they are waiting on is fuel. The car is off of the air jacks and Dane is waiting for the signal from his left front tire changer to be told to leave. And now he gets it. Perfect timing, just like Mr. Penske would want it. Sure, Adam, our continental tire pit lane reporter. Well, Philippe Nasser has just pressed the go button here. Only a couple of seconds. It's not exactly a massive lead from Philippe Albuquerque in second. 31 from five, the two Cadillacs. And we've seen these cars have battles before, but let's not forget, they are leading the championship first and second with just one point between them. Next up, they've got 198 and 197 on 188, is uh, the number 10 Cadillac, which currently has Ringer van der Zander behind the wheel in sixth position. He's a couple of seconds behind Tristan Nunes in the He's second in the of the pit, Masters. Actually. And in fact, van der Zander has just pitted. Hmm. Again, that's looking to make one more pit Absolutely. stop, I think, before the end. Absolutely. So they're looking to try and make something happen. I think they probably could have gone a little bit further than they did they were last in the pits on lap 18 oh no that's about right actually 
That is about right. The Shea Adam is watching what should be another routine pit stop. Routine with the driver changes. Jordan Taylor is taking over from Ranger Van Zand. And the last time he drove here at Road America was to a second place finish at the end of last year. He felt like they had a car to win, but nobody could touch Pippo Durrani last year. Well, this year they've got an opportunity. It's four new Continental tires going on the glossy black Cadillac as the driver change is quick in record time. That is done. Fueling hose is still in. The tire change is complete. Car comes off the air jacks and just waiting on the fuel. That's exactly how Wayne Taylor's boys and girls are trained to do it. Waiting the fuel probe comes out Jordan puts every ounce of life that 5.5 liter Cadillac engine has did notice that one of the tire changing crew was finished on the left rear and then thought do you know what I'm not going to leave that right front tire where it was I'm going to pull it out the way so he's got a cleaner run to the exit and he quickly hustled down and brought it back to the back of the car that's really smart thinking uh, down there at uh, the Konica Minolta racing team yeah Pierce and it's under uh, watching the uh, Nick Tandy coming out of the carousel at the moment is being closed uh, closed down on by a Ooh, yellow but, yeah. Corvette now uh, who's that then is that Garcia who's fallen off the lead oh line? no yeah, it's number nine, two, 9 12 and number three car they're both, uh, they're both correct. pit stops correct that's Sorry. what that is uh, but the, uh, the in the lead of that class so nine, no, but is a 911 nine with a 67 and the 25 cars right there the BMWs a lot more competitive this weekend than we have seen uh, for a long long time well we saw some of the green shoots of recovery or at least not recovery but them getting their heads around what was going on i'll talk about that in a moment because we've got significant pit stops from colin brown who's come out of the top of the standings he was in third position the tangerine blue and white prototype in the pit lane also p4 to rani uh, opposite me i'll keep an eye on the esm patron Pit stop as Shea Adam tells you what's going on with Core Autosports. Fuel and tires for this car, as well as the door opens and a huge water bottle passed to Colin Brown. So clearly his in-car water bottle is either empty or not functioning entirely to his liking. There was a bit of debris stuck on the front of the 54, but they managed to get it off. No issues, gave a windshield tear off to Colin. Durrani is down and rolling as Pippo is coming towards me. It's still waiting on the field for the Orca. Who's it gonna be first? I think it's gonna be Pippo up first. And it is, the 22 ESM machine leaves ahead of Colin Brown. Well, that's a turnaround there. And a very good stop indeed by ESM. Uh, it's got people to riding ahead of Colin Brown as they come out right in front of Jordan Taylor, who's made his stop. Now, that's going to be tight as well. Meantime, battle at the bottom end of GT Le Mans. Antonio Garcia has got by Earl Bamba, courtesy of a 2 or 4 5 last time around. The overtake has happened. These are the guys who've made their penultimate pit stop. Just one more to go from these guys. My question is, how much longer can Nick Tandy go? He was last in the pits on lap 13. Remember, he came in very early, but out of kilter. The first full course yellow played into his hands. He's only got three tenths of a second between himself and Richard Westbrook. As into the pit lane comes the bulk of the prototypes. The 77 Mazda scored as the leader as Tristan Nunes goes through and we take a Continental Tire Pit Lane report. For the 55 Mazda that hits its marks first, that is the driver change. Jonathan Bomarito gets in and Harry Tinkle, the starting driver, is out fuel and tires for them. For the Gainsco Red Dragon, the number 99, it is fuel and tires. Stephen Simpson staying in that car. For the number 71, uh, sorry, the seven, they are coming in. Elio Castronov is staying in, and it's fuel and tires will be four new Continentals. And the 85, which has been slightly delayed, the JDC Miller Motorsport Banana Boat, fuel tires, and a driver change. Robert Alon finally getting out, Simon Trummer getting in. The two Action Express cars, John, you've got a view up? Yes, I have, and it's just tires and fuel for the 31 that came in from the lead. It is Felipe Nasser stays aboard, Felipe Albuquerque will stay aboard the 31 and they go out the way they came in. And they beat out the Mazda, John, the 55 is the next car to roll, then is the Gainsco Red Dragon and then we have the 2, which should now be Ryan Dial driving the Tequila Patron ESM car and indeed it is. Now the 7 Penske rolls, that is still Elio Castro Neves behind the wheel. And a longer stop for the Banana Boat, the number 85, as they are now taking the opportunity to change the nose before Simon Tremor goes out on track. Jordan Taylor's right in the mix now Jeremy's he came down the front straight as those prototypes were heading out after their scheduled pit stops 
that number 10 car right there and slotted in behind, I think behind Jonathan Bomarito. Certainly was close to Stephen Simpson, just depends how quickly they get up to speed. Tristan Nunes stayed out and surely will he come did. in next time around. I would expect so. The interesting thing is here, how fast can he go on this on this in lap? He's a 55-6 last time around, which is yeah, pretty much the same as the leaders have been running uh, since the uh, green flag 10 laps ago. Meantime in GT Le Mans, the leaders are absolutely together as in does come the 77. Shea Adam will keep a look at that as the rest of the prototype fields coming round. This is all going to be tremendously important how this shakes out. Still one more pit stop to come after this one. Mazda Team Yost going to work. It looks pretty good. But where are the other cars? Felipe Nazar, Philip Albuquerque, Jonathan Bomarito all coming round the far side of the circuit and all had a bit of traffic to get through there. Nick Tandy's got Richard Westbrook right up his tailpipes fighting for GTLM. And here they come. They'll be coming to the final corner anytime soon. How's the pit stop going, Shea Adam? It's another driver change for the 77 Mazda. Oliver Jarvis is back in. They did fuel tires, and he is rolling. He's about halfway down the pit lane. Now he hits the marks. That means he's got about 10 pit boxes to go. Now five more. He's almost at the pit exit. That's the sound of the 31 going past on track. And there is the five as Ollie Jarvis will come up behind those two, but ahead of the sister car. So that 77 Mazda then has got out in front of a whole gaggle of cars that were battling through the GT Daytona field. One, two, three across the track, going down into turn one. Colin Brown has got the Acura Penske right on his tail, and that is Dan Cameron now behind the wheel of the number six car. He is yeah. literally following in the wheel tracks of Colin Brown, and those guys have got all kinds of traffic around them that they aren't battling, but they've got Stephen Simpson and people Durrani ahead of him. We'll wait for this to shake out, but Ollie Jarvis has rejoined in that 77 Mazda. I think Philippe Nazar holds the lead from Philippe Albuquerque, the two Indeed, he does. Cadillacs that were out there. Where did Ollie Jarvis get in? I think he slotted in behind those two cars and ahead of J-Bomb, Jonathan Bomarito in the 55 Mazda. But the Mazdas are looking strong and fast, and they maybe just have a little more three wide into turn eight. And a fantastic move down the inside from Dean Cameron as they were going past Gustavo Jakobin. Wow, that was brave by everybody to go. Two cars on the inside of the Yak attack. Could have ended in all kinds of carbon fiber shards, that one. But somehow, Dan Cameron made it work. Colin Brown had to give best. Imagine he expected someone to dive down the inside when he was already passing a slower car. And that is a change of position then as Cameron moves up into eighth. An hour and 10 minutes to go, just under. We'll give you a Cadillac race rundown in a moment before any more of the pit stops start. We, we're about 10 minutes a little bit less away, a little bit more rather, away from the GTD final stops, I would say. Yeah, Colin Brown did nothing wrong there. Gets down the inside, maybe just hesitated a moment because he realized it was Gustavo Jakobin in the car, who can be uh, a little erratic at times. And Dan Cameron says, well, you know what? I've got a car between myself and Gustavo. I'll give it a go down the inside. Uh, that, a minute. that was the old Yakuzak, right? <laughs> well, Leopard, spots, change. <laughs> Rearrange. No, in fairness, uh, Gustavo hasn't done anything silly for quite a while. Quite a while. By the way, the uh, number, the race leader, number 31 car, just turned its best lap of the race, 154.053. Teammate Philippe Albuquerque also turned his best lap in the race in second place, 154.026. So, uh, pretty much identical lap times by our two leaders. And they got a margin, uh, pretty good margin for those great pit stops by those cadets over the uh, two Mazdas who are running now absolutely in tandem there, about six seconds further back. We'll keep an eye on uh, how that progresses the next few laps. Tristan Nunes didn't do a very long stint there in the 77, Jeremy. What's the, is there a there's drive time for prototypes? No. No, not so not very effectively, not right. 10 minutes or something like that. Yeah, so that's, they've just uh, played 
their cards. Yeah, he's he needs to get 10 minutes, minutes in, I think, doesn't he? Yeah. I think that's the, yeah. the minimum. Uh, last lap for Philippe Albuquerque and Felipe Nazar. 154.053, 154.026. Both their cars fastest of the race. Meantime, at the head of GT Le Mans. Oh, Nick tanny has gone off the track at turn number seven, drops the two near side to left hand side. Michelin's into the dirt, and all of a sudden, I'm transported back to the great old days of rallycross at Lyndon Hill, and a Porsche is kicking up dirt. Michelin tyre is great, but not built for grass tracking. Two of England's finest GT drivers, Nick Tandy and Richard Westbrook, live too far apart either, the centre of England. And they are at it, hammer and tongs at the moment. Screaming Porsche from the slightly more rumbly and a bit quiet of the Ford with that uh, three and a half litre V6 Eco Boost engine mounted amidships for the Ford and the flat six mounted amidship for the Porsche. Interesting stat on that, Pat McPeele was telling me that the actual weight distribution since they turned the engine and the gearbox around and pushed the engine further back into the car, it's only changed by about one and a half percentage points. But the big advantage, of course, that the new RSR has had over the last season and a half is that honking great diffuser. Couldn't have that before because of the engine position. It just wasn't possible. That's allowed them to change the aerodynamics at the front and use the underside of the car for more aerodynamic possibilities. Off at the kink. It's the 73. Oh. 73, Patrick Lindsay, who was in second position. Huge cloud of dust and a left rear wheel issue. He's been in the wall. Patrick Lindsay's been driving so well and was second in GT Daytona to Madison Snow as the GT Le Mans lead changes under the Corvette bridge, but there's wheel banging going on. Big contact, big contact, the 911 under the back of the 67. It's a good job that that car had already lost its rear light cluster, because if it hadn't, it had been gone there. Westbrook and Tandy, Tandy from a short track background, not afraid to put the fender on in his earlier career, and he was doing that again, and he's made some damage, caused some damage to his right front wheel arch. That's a new leader in GT Le Mans, and it's a Ford now, the 67, Richard Westbrook, right in there in the championship, remember, third position, just two points away from their teammates who are having a shocker of a race this weekend. Patrick Lindsay hasn't made it back to the pits. And the number seven of Elio Castro Neves is coming, I think, Shea, possibly expecting a full course yellow. Never doubt Tim Sendrick. He called in Elio as soon as it appeared to be a slow moving car on track. They're doing fuel and tires. Elio staying behind the wheel of this number seven Acura team Penske. We've got a lot of teams that have scrambled up to get on the wall to try and get their cars in before and if the yellow is called. That is the sound of the Acura getting back underway. Both BMWs are expecting to come in very soon as well. Do you know what, if I was a GTD team, I think I might have a go as well right now and get in before a full course yellow comes out with just an hour to go, that they're not far off. Here comes the GT Le Mans field. Nick Tandy, Westbrook. How did Tandy get in first on that? No, he haven't, that's just a, a timing anomaly. Uh, Shea Adam has the GT Le Mans field. And uh, there is quite a bit of damage to the front right of that Porsche as there's a driver change going on. Patrick Pile taking over from Nick Tandy in the 911 fuel and tires for them. Both of the BMWs are uh, doing fuel and tires. No driver change on either of them. It was Richard Westbrook ahead of Nick Tandy as they drove past me on the pit lane. Wisties, whose pit box is all the way down. Uh, they are doing fuel and tires on that car as well. 25 BMW is the first car back out and rolling as it beats out the number 911. And Porsche, that is quite significant. Now the 24 BMW gets moving as well, but uh, Nick Tandy's Porsche, which is now being driven by Patrick Pile, will slot out between the two BMWs, and there's a Corvette in as well. Uh, two Corvettes in. One of the Corvettes is leaving. Pit close lights are on. Full course caution, and the Ford out of second. We've got the three Corvette in, and the six, as well as the 912, which is coming in 
and then the 48 and the 58, all these cars making it into the pit lane before the lights close. That's very important because the 58 Porsche, which is the one that started from pole, had Patrick Long driving it when it began the race. Christina Nielsen took over for her middle stint. Now Patrick Long is getting back into the car for the 48 Paul Miller Racing Lamborghini. That will be Brian Sellers finally taking over for, for his stint. The championship leader will try to get back out as far forward as he can. That's the sound of the number 912 having done their fuel and tire stop and the prototype number 10 was also in they came back out that was no driver change because jordan taylor had taken over the cadillac not very long ago just waiting on fuel for this number 58 porsche and the 48 lamborghini further pit stop back up it is a full course yellow for the number 73 per place porsche waiting on fuel for the patrick long car now he is sent and the Bryant Sellers Lamborghini leaves as well. So Bryant Sellers leads Patrick Long out of the pit lane. Woof. And a round of applause from the pit team there. I wonder if Patrick Lindsay had a problem there because uh, he looked like he just understeered off, may have been a left-hand side puncture. All kinds of bumping and boring down mm. at turn five and turn six at, as Richard Westbrook and it was Nick Tandy, wasn't it, at that time were having a go. Uh, Richard Westbrook down the inside first of all clearly upset Nick Tandy who then pulled across on him and then Richard blocking him on the exit of the corner and slowing down on the exit which also did impress I think that will be being looked at as well come on guys you're both better than that uh, Ruben not quite the racing not that amount of Ruben is racing here the week's time when the Xfinity cars are back different matter I know Nick Tandy has always harboured an ambition of getting onto the ovals out here. Having started in short oval racing. Wow. Right, an hour to go. Let me give you a rundown of how things are. Uh, if I can, we'll just have to wait until everybody comes back around in GT Le Mans because there's been some pit stops there. But at the head of the field for the Cadillac race update with one hour to go, uh, 31 Cadillac, Philip Anassi, uh, Philip uh, Felipe Nasser, let's get it right hind off. Second place, his team car, the number five, Philippe Albuquerque. Then Ollie Jarvis back aboard the Mazda number 77. Now they're all in behind the safety car, so don't worry about any intervals at the moment in terms of time. 55 Mazda in fourth position. Then it's Pipo Durrani in the number 22, the green and black ESM Nismo power prototype. Then the best of the two global p2 cars that's the 99 the red gains court orica of stephen simpson and the 54 the white tangerine and black orica from court autosport colin brown then there's a few cars in between before ryan dl is the next prototype to pop up uh, i'll wait a moment for gt Le Mans until they've all gone through bumping and boring through turn five six for that battle for the lead just before they came in that actually really is immaterial now that was for the lead at the time between Richard Westbrook and Nick Tandy uh, it may attract the attention of race control but as it stands now GT Le Mans is led by the white BMW number 25 of Conor de Filippi after a brilliant pit stop from then, beating out Richard Westbrook, who stayed behind the wheel of the uh, somewhat battle-scarred 67. Everybody's had a go at that today, it would seem. Uh, then in third place is the 911 Porsche, but now with Patrick Pelé, the affable Frenchman behind the wheel of that car. Fourth will be the number four Chevy Corvette of Tom Milner. Fifth, the second BMW, which is the black M8 GT LM from Rahal Letnam and Lanigan. That's Jonathan Edwards. Then it's Tony Garcia for Corvette, riding high in the championship, remember. And then Earl Bamba, see above comment, riding high in the championship. Now, what this will do is close all of those together, but the championship leaders, the 66 car, still laps off the lead after their problems earlier on and that means that they are still looking at eighth position at best i think that was a left front puncture for patrick lindsay as he turned in to the kink 
Right, thank you for the update. It's all going to be completely different in a couple of minutes. But that is that was well, the I situation. Didn't do GTT no, 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 that was deliberately because I think there'll be some well, more changes pro, no, there. No, prototypes is going to be totally different. Really? Uh, because, yeah, because all all the guys who didn't uh, make a, a, a pit stop um, are going to be well. The few guys that didn't make a pit stop are going to be ruining that. Did they all make pit stops? No, they didn't, did they? Uh, so, yeah, yes, they did. Pretty much everybody yeah, did. That. Beg your pardon. Yeah, pretty much everybody has been. A few guys that, that wait, waited, uh, waited, didn't they? But they were able to get in just before the uh, the, the pits were closed, right? Scratch. Where that. I think the changes will come, Jeremy. The Alessandro Pergidi leads for WeatherTech Ferrari in the 63 with Alvaro Perent second for the guy shares with Catherine Legg. That's the 86 Acura. Then it's the 33 Bleak Amorland Mercedes. Then Kyle Marcelli, Marcelli in the uh, Lexus. Now, this is all important for the championship uh, as far as the GT Daytonas go because uh, some of those guys have made a pit stop recently. Yes. Some of them have not. I'm still... Uh, our TV colleagues looking very carefully at Patrick Lindsay's off at the kink. And I'm... I... If he wasn't helped off, he had a breakage. I'm not sure if the Mazda was close enough to have affected that, but Patrick is a pretty straight-up guy, and if Patrick Lindsay is making some uh, radio traffic, maybe, before he got out of the car, we'll get back to that in a moment. Here comes the rest of the field that hasn't stopped, including... Mazda number 55, Shea Adam with the Continental Tire Pit Lane update. Fuel and tires for that 55 Mazda, John. It's fuel tires and a driver chain for the 52 PR1 Matheson AFS car. Sebastian Savader taking it over. The Red Dragon is getting fuel and tires just only for Sebast for uh, Sim Stephen Simpson. Wow, too many S's there. For the 66 Ford GT, the one that came into this race as the championship leader, but is now down several laps thanks to the broken right rear tow link. They are doing fuel and tires for that car and the four Corvette came in in a really good stop. They did fuel and tires as well. Just a reminder that it's August the 25th for the Xfinity NASCAR race here at Road America. Next week, mid-Ohio, uh, Catherine Legg making her Xfinity debut, riding high in the championship here. 9, 11 and 67 are under review. Andy Lally, who's a regular in NASCAR road course racing at all levels, also in that uh, mid-Ohio race. No, sorry, he's back here on the 25th, isn't he? Uh, pits have been opened for GT Daytona. Pretty certain there was no touch between the Mazda and Patrick Lindsay. And don't forget, you can follow that Xfinity race next week at mid-Ohio with Catherine Legg on NBCSN. So the, uh, the prototypes are not going to be able to get home to the finish from here no. on one... Uh, without another splash of fuel. Uh, so interesting there for number 55, the number 99, and the number 54 uh, did come on to the pit lane while the pits were open just now. So uh, they will have to be back in again, but they're going to need much, uh, a little, a little bit, bit less, less fuel. fuel. Not an awful lot because they were last well, in Jarvis was six, only seven laps ago. I was going to say Oli Jarvis was only in four, four laps ago, five laps yeah, ago, six, yeah. and, and he, st he stayed out. They're, they're looking just to go and do their one final pit stop and try and hold on to their track position, I would say. Yeah, because number, uh, number 77 car, that had been the last of the leaders to Correct. pit uh, on that uh, previous sequence. We have seen but the, the Mazda's uh, go quite long at times on fuel as well. That little two-litre engine. At the moment, Conor De Filippi is the leader of GTLM, and that's a bit of a spoiler for the championship. Mm. Not one of the leading lights in the championship, which no. coming in here, Joey Hand and Dirk Muller had 208 in the Ford, which is sitting solidly in eighth position and probably, unless there's problems for anyone else, probably won't improve after that suspension issue when they ran over the kerb at turn one. Uh, Magnussen and Garcia at 207 points, currently sitting in seventh position, so that's not a great points haul for them. Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe, 206 points, and they're sitting in second position ahead of a Porsche, but in terms of the championship, the wrong Porsche, because it's the 911 and it's the 912 who's better placed. But that is going to vault uh, 
Tandy and Pele up a couple of positions, I reckon. It's all going to be very tight if it stays like this, but of course it's GTLM, so it won't. Yeah, but no, and, and it's <laughs> ridiculously close. Just looking at the best lap times for each of the GTLM cars during the race, I think the fastest lap has been set by Antonio Garcia. Well, that car, I'm not quite sure. My score is locked up on uh, for some reason. Uh, at uh, 204.2, all, I think, of the other uh, other cars have done a 204.5 or a 204.5 or a 204.6, i.e. all of them within a tenth of a second. So uh, track position here really, really important, and that's what Colin Di Filippi will have over Richard Westbrook at the restart. So it's now, it's a BMW, Ford, Porsche, Chevrolet, BMW, Porsche, because we've got the, the class reset now, uh, and those uh, GTD cars that want to come onto pit lane can. And a great stint by uh, Christina Nielsen, by the way, who held on to that third position before handing over to Patrick Long a little while ago. The rest of the GTDs who didn't come in before the full course caution are now in, and Shea Adam, Adam has this Continental Tire Pit Lane report. I will tell you which cars they are because they are all doing exactly the same service. It's fuel and tires for the Magnus 44 Audi, the 14 Lexus, the 63 Ferrari, the 33 Mercedes, and both of the GT Actors, the 86 being driven by Al Perrin and the 93 by Lawson Aschenbach. It's going to be a drag race to see who gets going first. They're all off of the air jacks except for the Magnus Audi and the fuel still going into every single one of those cars. It is the Riley Motorsports Mercedes that gets moving first. So Jerome Blinkmullen looking for a sixth win around Road America is the first of the car to leave the pit lane, followed by the 63 Ferrari. So the Scuderia Course guys doing a really good job. Then it is the 86 Acura, the 15 Lexus, the 93 Acura, and the last car on the pit lane is the 44 Magnus Audi. There is a problem here. Now they're pulling the car off the air jacks and sending Andy Lally. That was a long stop, and I'll have to figure out why. Just having a look at the 86 Acura as it was on the pit lane. Quite a lot of damage to the left front of that car, and that, I think, was from the incident earlier on when it hit the 63 Ferrari. And uh, it was right rear on the 63 and left front on the Acura. And... Uh, think themselves lucky not to have got called for that because uh, the two other bits of front to rear contact has been called today the prototypes are going to the front which means we'll be going green next time by with just under 50 five zero minutes to go and those GTD cars that have just called in will go the distance from there the ones that came in just before I think they'll be all right I think it'll be close but I think they'll be all right we'll soon know so go back down to the pit lane, Shea Adam. Uh, Magnus Racing, the reason that they were the last cars out of the pit lane, they changed the angle of the rear wing, because why not? It's Andy Lally. Let him have some fun with it. Well, yeah, they're going to yeah. go on to the back of the uh, the tail of the safety car train, give him a little bit more top speed. Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is going to be a fascinating contest here. What a great job the Action Express team has done to get those two Cadillacs to the front of the field, 31 and the, th and the 5. I mean, we, we see it on a consistent basis, don't we? And the, the Mazdas have been fast all day long. That's good to see. Oliver Jarvis in third place at the moment. And then the two Nissans, boy, the troubles they've had for the last few weeks. They started well down the pack, but now running in fourth and fifth places ahead of Jordan Taylor. So, you know, there's been some different strategies played out here in terms of when they make their pit stops. But I'm pretty sure, every, well, I have no doubt, unless there's more caution periods, that everybody else is going to have to make another pit stop before the end of the race. There's no doubt about that, I think. Uh, so I think there is no doubt about that. Period. Uh, Which uh, sorry, but, who was but, that for? But the, the, but the key then is how much fuel they need oh, for the uh, their final stops. Yes, 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 yes. I, I totally agree. GT cars, I reckon, uh, should be should be good to go. Mm, not sure for the GT. Not sure for the GT Le Mans cars. I, I, I think so because they're pretty good at, at being meager on the fuel. That's true. Uh, the, the, Westy, the Westy won't be able to go yellow. for two hours from here. <laughs> because we've seen what he's like when he puts his slippers on and puts his mind to it. Shall we go racing again, ladies and gentlemen? I think we should lean forward, deep breath again, and here we go. Green flag is in the air. Felipe Nasser jumps away well before the final corner and strings out the field. Meanwhile, behind the 85, Simon Trummer has got a real battle on his hands. That was Sebastian Saavedra, I think, right up his tailpipes, moving left and right, trying to get past him as they come down towards the first corner. No, it wasn't. It was one of the 
Ah, because he's out of position, of course, being a lap down. So that will have been Elio Castro Neves that was weaving around in the wheel tracks of the number 85. Here come the GT cars. As a significant penalty, Patrick Pelier will have to serve on behalf of his teammate, Nick Tandy, incident responsibility with the yeah. 67. Drive through. Petulant, costly. Very costly indeed. Very costly indeed. And that is going to take the Porsche out of it. It will actually help their teammates who are better positioned in the championship, but that is a scant reward, I think. And just to be feel, because you feel you've been wronged is no reason to retaliate. It's just uh, it's just not smart, I'm afraid, Nick. There's a good interesting pass there with the number 48 car moving from past the 96. That is the battle. That's for the lead. That oh, must be a great start by Marcus Bartolo then. Yeah, that was for the lead at the time. And uh, Pat Long's gone. Pat Long was in there as well. Paul Taller started third. And then uh, dropped back. Has dropped back again. We'll check those positions as they come through. Also right in the mix, Alvaro Perent. A little bit of damage to the left front of that. Gray and Camo 86 NSX. Man, there's so much, so much going on. Where do you look in this field? Kyle Marcelli right in the championship hunt as well in GTD. Seventh position for that car and looking to improve. Well, well, leaders have gone through. NASA by about a second on Albuquerque, then a second to Oli Jarvis, then a second to Pipo Durrani. Are you getting the, the picture here? And a second to DL. Just wonder if the two ESM cars could possibly work together, save a bit of fuel. GT Le Mans cars coming across the line. 25 leading is the BMW of Conor de Felipe. Westbrook and Pele going at it. Further back down the field now. It's Patrick Long that leads in GTD, by the way. Yeah, absolutely. 911 slipping backwards as John Edwards was having a look at Earl Bamba as well. Side by side, the 24 and the 912 under the Sargento Cheese Bridge. And they're very close, as is the Corvette and the Porsche number 911. Further up ahead of them, that's the number four of Tommy Milner trying to make up the position, but the Porsche later on the brakes. But the BMW does make the pass behind and then gets a bump from Great the 911. Move. Great move by Tommy Milner there. He, he allowed the Porsche to take break deep into the corner, cut back across millimetres behind the tail. We've got a great run off the corner, up the hill to turn six and makes that pass. A four then ahead of number 911. Brilliant stuff by Tommy Milner. Love the opportunity to talk to Alexander Sims when your car is leading. What sort of uh, BMW does Alex uh, does uh, Connor have though? Can he get it to the end in one piece? Yeah, it's, it's pretty hooked up in uh, race trim. Um, all going well so far. I mean, don't want to count our chickens, but uh, things are looking pretty sensible, I'd say. Fuel numbers are okay for you guys? Yeah, with that long safety car, I think it's probably brought everyone into the into the same strategy. Um, we're, we're fairly comfortable. What's been the change from the last couple of races to see you guys at the top of the charts now? Well, this, this track certainly suits our car more than Lime Rock. Um, we've obviously had a couple of BOP adjustments um, since, since Watkins, which has brought us back into the mix. Um, but yeah, really the car just seems to be well suited to the race trim here. Um, yeah, I mean, very happy to be competitive. Well, we've just gone full course caution because of an incident with the 52, so that'll help your fuel numbers even more. Good luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's that's easy now, I think. Do you know what I said? Gustavo Jakob, that's a today thing. I think that was Saavedra. Oh, no, it was Saavedra. It was Saavedra. Yeah, it was. I forgot the change drivers. Uh, Sebastian Saavedra uh, went wide on the vinyl corner, bounced across the grass and hit the wall. Uh, he's got into pit lane, but he's blocking partially, blocking pit lane. And it will be a short caution here because they should be able to get somebody to that and pull them up the road and then go back to green. 43 minutes to go. Now, who does this help in the prototype ranks? Everybody well, stopped at roughly the same it, time. The yeah, fourth. but what it does do is help those guys that came in that, that made the splash of fuel. They've got a little bit more fuel than everybody else. Mm. I, I still don't think it's going to be quite enough to get to the end. 
It's getting close though, Jeremy. Somebody might want to roll the dice, you know, if you're further down. Thinking of somebody like Jordan Taylor in the number 10 Cadillac. He was last in on lap 44. Stephen Simpson and Colin Brown both last in yeah, on add, lap... Add, add one, actually. It's the end, the end of 45 there. All right, got you. But the lap that shows there is a lap previous to their pit stop. I don't know why. Okay. Uh, but they came in, the end, they came I, I in the, the, on the 45th lap. So the 55, the 99 and the 54 Correct. all came in on the end of the... During the caution on, on the end of the 45th, 45th lap. lap. Yes. Okay, understood. So they've got at least a lap better than anybody else yeah, around them. Two laps, yeah. The the uh, the number ten and number six and number seven they came in right before right before the caution came out. The the person who's worse off for fuel who came in at the end of lap 37 is people Durrani in the 22. His teammate in the two Ryan DL. That's the two ESM prototypes. Right. He came in one lap later. Yeah, I still don't think, because uh, this is going to be a fairly quick uh, yellow, I think. Saavedra out of the AFS prototype. It, it'll be quicker. We won't have go to go through the pit stop sequences again. So uh, we'll, go, we'll be going back to green probably in a lap or two. Uh, but the safety car laps here, well, they run about four minutes probably, or better part of that. Uh, so... Uh, it's still going to be touch and go for those guys that haven't made a pit stop during that previous caution period. Mazda Motorsport. Wow, it's actually quite a big hit it's on the wall. Big hit um, on the, wall yeah. the left rear. Car stood up very, very well, but that love, he's going to have bruises where the belts were. No doubt about that. When he wakes up tomorrow, he's going to be stiff. Uh, feel the aches and pains there and this from Master Motorsports tweeting us here said they've split the strategy yes they have finally yeah they've been listening to us yeah, Oli Jarvis staying out as we saw he stays in third Bomarito drops to ninth in the 55 which is where he is at the moment so that was deliberate from Master Motorsports yep. they're giving themselves the best opportunity here Oli Jarvis then opting for track position and the 55 of Jonathan Bomarito offering, uh, opting for as much fuel as possible and maybe, just maybe, depending on yellow flags, stretching it to the end. They've got the best chance. Yep. The 55, the Oregon number 54 and Stephen Simpson's Oregon number 99 with the best chance. Let's call in on GT Daytona. Brian Sellers in second position in the race, We're leading the championship. He's right up behind Pat Long for Wright Porsche, who leads the class. Great run early on by Madison Snow, who's with Shea Adam. Madison, we've been calling your name a lot today. You've been doing a ton of driving. Brian said early on that he was going to do the double today. It wound up being you early on. How much does that affect you mentally when all of a sudden you're staying in the car for a lot longer than you planned? That's a lot more fun than getting out of the car earlier and handing it over to Brian. I mean, it was we got the car pretty cool right now. The sun's not not killing us out there, so it wasn't that bad in the car. So that was all about strategy when uh, everything got thrown out the window with that early caution? Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where if the yellow would have happened five minutes later with drive time, I probably would have been out of the car. But, you know, I got lucky in that stint and got to stay in and have some more fun with the cars out there. Brian in second right now behind Patrick Long in the Porsche. What sort of Lamborghini does he have to go after that Porsche? We got the consistency and we're good at the end of the stint. We don't have the uh, outright speed on the straightaways, but I think, you know, getting a, well, when I was out there, I was able to get a gap and run consistent. So I think uh, if I had a guess, Pat might run away a little bit and then we might start catching back up. That's what I got to hope. That makes for a better race for the spectators. Good luck the rest of the way, Madison. Thank you. Love the attitude of Madison yeah. Snow. Leave me in the car, Chief. Yeah, I love it. Uh, it's been a r another excellent performance by that team uh, and both drivers so far in this race. Currently running in second place. Patrick Long is out front, as he was at Lime Rock. And had some tired difficulties towards the end of the race. They slipped back. But what a season it's been for Paul Miller Racing. Been on the podium just, uh, you know, metronomically, it's been fantastic. That, of course, is how you win championships. Just looking again at this wonderful GTLM battle, Colin Felipe leads. What's interesting, though, is I talked about how closely all the lap times were for each of the cars uh, a few minutes ago. Well, uh, on the lap before we went uh, yellow this time, Richard Westbrook turned the fastest lap at a 2 minutes 4.0. That's a half a second quicker than most of the other cars. Uh, the 204.2 for, for, uh, for Antonio Garcia, that was set uh, a little while ago, about 10 laps ago. Uh, but all of the other guys within a tenth of a second. But uh, that's ominous, certainly for the BMW. But uh, the BMW does have very, very good pace. 
see what can, what can happen with the what uh, 37 minutes remaining. Patrick Pelo has not yet taken the drive through for Nick Tandy's incident with Richard right. Westbrook because he th we went yellow before that and the pits of course are closed so he can't he can't take it under yellow and the pits are closed and they won't open until after the first full green flag lap so they have to be careful with that uh, coming up after the checkered flag Michelin post race tech already starting to get some points coming in using the hashtag Michelin PRT questions like this from Nick Holland if a prototype wouldn't be allowed to continue without a cheese wedge behind the rear wheel how come the 67 Ford is being permitted to race on this is IMSA not WEC Nick the 31 car has got uh, most of the right rear missing behind the wheel of that car yes, and that's being allowed lap. to run on and that happened on the first lap uh, this is uh, this is not the same regulations as are applied in uh, WEC so there's no favoritism being uh, being shown here no difference between the classes the damage that is uh, on both of those cars nigh on identical except on the other side of the cars if you've got any more as questions as long as it's not on, on the way to the end of the race of course well yes yes that's that's very true uh, if you've got any more questions like that Hashtag Michelin PRT to at IMSA Radio. Jeremy, Shea and myself and any guests we can get hold of uh, over by Victory Circle will uh, run them by. We've got a lot to talk about this weekend with the schedule announcement for 2019 earlier on in the weekend. If you didn't hear the Ask Atherton part of our live broadcast on Saturday, that's on the front page of the RadioLamont.com site, and you can have a listen to that where Scott Atherton, the man at the head of IMSA, answered questions that you'd submitted via Twitter. Hashtag Michelin PRT. Let's have your questions, points arising, or observations to at IMSA Radio, please. The chequered flag ends the race, but only starts the conversation. Still to come, 35 minutes or thereabouts of racing. Probably going to be somewhere just over half an hour, Jeremy. Yeah, and uh, certainly many of the teams who relieved who didn't go green on, on, the, on that last time around because the number 52 car hasn't yet been flat bedded out of the way. But um, I would be, I would anticipate a green flag this time around, which, as you say, leaves leave sort of 34, 33 minutes to go. And um, it's going to be tight for many of the prototype cars. There's going to be a lot of fuel save going on out there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. A lot of people praying for another caution period. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think now the guys, um, I'm sure she is already on their way down, on her way down to Master Team Joost. Mike Peters on the pit perch down there, as well as Ralph Jutner. And a number of very, very clever people will be crunching the data working out what they need to do to get that 55 car of Jonathan Bomarito currently in ninth position another 35 minutes he can't be a long way off it at the moment I tell you no because you, you remember uh, on lap 40 which after they made regular pit stops they were running in third and fourth positions number 77 ahead of number 55 number 77 had gone a lap longer than a 55 beforehand but then during that subsequent caution period they elected as we heard, to, to split the strategy, to bring the number 55 car in, so that's dropped it back down to ninth position, but it does have, uh, f what, four more laps of uh, green flag running of fuel on, uh, on board, mm -hmm. uh, and that is a significant amount. Yeah, correct. Other cars who are in the similar position stopped on the same lap as that number 55 Mazda Team Yost car. The 99 bright red Stephen Simpson driven Gaines Core Orica and Colin Brown in the 54 core car. Now we've seen those Gibson engine cars, Jeremy, mm -hmm. be very frugal indeed when they need to. They're still quick, but they do seem to get good fuel mileage. I remember particularly back at places like Canadian Tire Motorsport Park, which is again another quick circuit. So they might be in a good shape as well if people have to drop into the pits. Currently, those cars, 9th, 10th, and 11th, but if people have to dive into the pits, watch them climb up the order. GTLM, 25 BMW from 67 Ford and four Chevy Corvette. 58 Porsche leads GTD from 48 Lamborghini and 96 BMW at the head of the field. Philippe Nasa is waiting for the green, which is in the air, and he'll lead his teammate, Philippe Albuquerque, and Ollie Jarvis in that 77 Mazda, another 
absolute copybook restart from Nazar. And here comes Ollie Jarvis, already side by side with the Mustang sampling. Cadillac pulls over to driver's right. Had a really good run up the hill, the little two litre car. Having a look round the outside and following in their wheel traps, people to Rani. We have released the people. And people, a little bit crispy overalls from earlier on in the weekend. But he said that car was feeling great earlier on in the warm-up this morning, and now we've got a battle for second place. Pimo Durrani right alongside Oli Jarvis. I think there might have been a touch there as Ryan DL was looking on from behind. people has gone through into third, and that's not good enough for him. He wants to be down the inside of the Mustang Sampley Cup. Great driving by Oli Jarvis there because he had to check up to avoid hitting the back. See, it can be done. You can stop the car. Magnificent stuff from these top-level guys. Yeah, really good stuff there. And uh, Philip Albuquerque had to go defensive down there into turn five. These Nissans have very good top-end speed. The Cadillac race update there just before we went back to green. 31 minutes and 31 seconds remaining. There might have been the tiniest of touches between Oli Jarvis and the back of the number 10 Cadillac, but it was... Uh, sorry, no, that uh, would have been uh, the... Five Cadillac, there's been a little touch on the back of Jordan Taylor's Cadillac then, in that case. Now that might have been Dan Cameron in the Acura. Just a little chunk taken out of the back. Spoiler in there is the 85 car. Simon Trummer, who's a lap off the lead and didn't get his lap back because we didn't go through the, any of the pit stops or wave around procedures. No, and he has set the fastest lap in the race yes, in that number 85 car a little while ago. 152.802, of course, a new lap record faster than last year's pole incidentally this movement at esm at the number two pit right opposite us Shea adams not too far up the pit lane 30 minutes to go now the question is now do you bring the cars in and splash them to the end in has come ollie jarvis ryan dl and elio castro nevis that's exactly what they're going to do Shea adam is watching the battle on pit roads it's going to be a little bit more than a splash though they're giving their drivers new tires to go out there and contend for the win at least that's the plan for the esm machine and the mazda they've changed the left side tires on the mazda and they've done esm exactly the same left side on the tw the two machine the number nine one run has come in to serve its penalty. There will be four new tires for the Penske Acura, the number seven. Just to confirm, that was left side only for the number two. And Ryan DL, he is the first car back out on the pit lane and moving. The number seven comes off the air jacks and gets going. It was a slower stop for the 77. But Oliver Jarvis has four fresh Continental tires and a very fast Mazda. And the answer for you, John, on that number 55, they would have been comfortable if they had two more laps of yellow. They thought even one, they could stretch it. But at this point, they're really nervous. Thank you, Shea Adam. Bomarito, though, is up into sixth position. The 911 of Patrick Pele, by the way, served its penalty and has dropped behind its teammate uh, into seventh position. Meantime, in GT Daytona, Alessandro Perguidi is having a cracking battle with Alvaro Parent. In fact, he's gone through, and that's championship implications as well for the teammate of Alvaro, of Alvaro Parent, Catherine Legg. In GTD, Pat Long leads by a second and a half over Brian Sellers, the 58 right motorsports car, not in the championship hunt, sadly, this year. They had a horrible start to the season. Christina Nielsen, paired with Patrick Long, has been champion in the last two years running. Brian Sellers in second position in that number 48 Lamborghini. Then Marcus Paltala drafted in at the very last moment. He thought he had a weekend watching the television with his feet up this weekend, but Bill Oberlin coming off a ladder whilst doing some home improvement, allowed Marcus Paltala to sub. Now, more prototype pit stops. Philippe Albuquerque comes in out of second position. Shea Adam. And this will be a very long trundle for Philippe all the way down to the opposite end of pit lane from pit exit where he came in. He will be waiting on the crew as they decide to tell him, are they going to change the tires? They have four Continentals up on the wall. Should Philippe choose them? They've got the fuel probe ready to go in the car. Yes, they are going to change the tires. They're doing the left side first. Now, whether they do just those two or they come around and change the right as well, we'll have to wait. And the left sides are done. They're racing back around. 
Nope, just the left side. So the five matches the two, and the Cadillac leaves the pit lane with enough fuel to get to the end. That's the sound of the 24 BMW. That was a drive through John. I don't know what for. Oh, it's going behind the wall. No, the bad fortune no. for Jesse Crone and John Edwards continues. The right-hand oh. indicator is on the 24 BMW. Back to the garage. Oh, my goodness. Can't believe they've had so much bad luck. Shea Adam absolutely right. Beautiful procedure there by the 24 of John Edwards. And that's big news, of course, for the port for the Ford number 66. Because if that car can't get out again with another couple of laps, the championship leader makes up another position. And that could be absolutely crucial when we come to Matul Petit Le Mans at the end of the season in GTLM. Just a point between the in fact two points between the, the first three teams battling for the drivers championship must have been a slow stop there for only jarvis he came out of full seven seconds behind elio castro nevers and also behind number two car four tires instead of two uh, okay four tires yeah, instead well, of two fair enough. yep thank you um, that's that was the difference there it was the number two car that made the best stop ryan dl two tires and a splash of fuel for the nismo powered prototype number two felipe nazar holds on to the lead from people to Rani, but people is charging last lap around took a couple of tenths out of the lead and it's down to about three seconds in gt le mans pat long leads from in second place brian sellers 58 porsche from 48 lamborghini marcus Baltella in the blue and yellow turner bmw then the 33 of jerome blake and this could be a big point steer for them didn't have a great result at Lime Rock Park and dropped away a little bit. Third in the championship at the moment, but at the moment sitting two points ahead of the second place car of uh, in the championship, that is, of Catherine Legg. Oh, Jeremy's going to have some arithmetic to do. Don't forget that after the chequered flag, Michelin Post Race Tech. Use the hashtag MichelinPRT at IMSA Radio on Twitter. And we'll go through the points arising. Can't wait got so much to talk about great racing weekend lots to talk about with the schedule announcement as well get your questions points arising suggestions or just observations in well, at imsa radio hashtag michelin prt only jarvis lost the whole second on that last lap of course getting his uh, cold tires up to temperature so he's now a full eight seconds behind uh, elio castro nevers more importantly he's a minute and 14 seconds away from the well, lead. yeah but uh, i think everybody else is going to have to stop uh, you yeah, know, with the possible exception of a couple of cars, but uh, yeah, he's lost a lot of ground to those other guys who's on the same strategy as he is. Guys ahead won't want to take any m more fuel than they need. Therefore, that it will be the fuel that is the limiting factor in the pit lane, the time factor in the pit lane. So they'll not want to risk changing tyres, which means they'll be on all the tyres towards the end. This might still work for Mazda, and I'm still looking at the 55, and behind him, the 54, the 55 Master is in fifth. The 54 Oregon from Colin Brown, by the way, got past Stephen Simpson while a couple of those pit stops were going on that we heard from our Continental Tire pit lane reporter, Shea Adam. So Colin Brown now just a second away from the back of Jonathan Bomarito, and those two Oregons with the Gibson engines are really, really good on fuel. And if the Mazda can get within a couple of laps, which is what Shea was telling us from Mazda Team yours. I reckon those two Oregas, the 54 and the 99, I think they can go. I think they'll make the end. And there is the battle for the lead for my money at the moment, unless guys ahead are extremely abstemious on the right hand pedal. Coming through the field, Elio Castro Neves picking his way through traffic as he comes up the hill. There goes Ryan Diel, who's the man ahead of him by a couple of seconds. NASA doing a great job at the moment and even the massed talents of people Durrani can't close him down. NASA, 31 Cadillac ahead. I wonder if they've told him to get his foot down, Jeremy, because they know he can't make it. Either they know he can and they've said you're fine, or uh, no, you can't get your foot down. Slow down for Elio Castro Nevers must have had a problem on that last lap. Drop three seconds on Ryan DL. It was a great stop by the way, number well. five car that came in uh, to the pit lane a couple of laps ago and came out well ahead of the cars with which it had been. Uh, okay, so at the green, number 31 car was leading, number five, 77, Cameron in the pit lane. And uh, yep, 
and uh, there's a lot a big difference now between the 5 2 the 7 and the 77 have already made pit stops six big Acura difference. in the pit lane the one with the blue marker lights on the top and round the headlights that puts Jonathan Bomarito into uh, into fourth position and just 9.7 seconds away from the lead Braun and Simpson 11 and 12 seconds away Shea Adam is watching the Acura team Penske Number six come in for what should be Shea, its final pit stop. It should be, and they're going to change the left side tires at the very least. Those two Continentals were sitting up on the pit while they scramble back around to do the rights. Nope, they're just doing the left. So same as the sister car. Car comes off the air jacks, and away goes Dane. What they did there was just kept filling it with fuel until the tires were on. I reckon they could have gone a little earlier. The left rear slightly recalcitrant and they just kept the fuel on until the car came down off the jacks. That tells me that they've probably got a little more fuel than they need, but they'll be able to go full rich on that. 22 minutes to go in GT Le Mans. Conor de Felipe leads from Richard Westbrook, and Conor's just put a cracking lap in and pulled out to about a second's lead, and he's got traffic in between him now. Meantime, in GT Daytona, the 63 of Alessandro Perghini has caught the 33 Mercedes, this is Ferrari versus Mercedes, Perkini goes round the outside in the first corner, getting a bit of a tour from Paul Taller, maybe ahead, squeezing each other into the first corner in the touch, and off it goes Perkini, well that was absolutely written in the stars, you didn't need to have a crystal ball to see that one, neither driver wanting to give way, Perkini three quarters of the way past Jerome Bleakamall and both of them trying to intimidate each other and Per Gidi already with damage to the right rear of that car that's where Catherine Legg ran into it in the early laps has dropped back down at least a couple of positions and that's important as far as Alvaro Perret in the 86 car and Catherine Legg's championship ambitions is concerned although that might be a position lost for Alvaro going into turn six indeed it is as Kyle Marcelli is fighting back in the Lexus into the pit lane Felipe Nasser from the lead and Pipo Durrani also the 22 car, Shea Adam. You watch the 22, John, I got the 31. They are changing the rear tires first of this 31 wheel and Cadillac. They are sticker Continentals, pulling the air jacks out. They are not doing lefts or rights. They are just doing the rear. Four tires for Pipo Durrani a bit further down the pit lane and then he's on the That is the sound of Nasser going back out. So they did fuel. They had a broomstick to hit the fueler with to let him know when to pull out. And they did the rears, only that's interesting. Just the rears? Yeah. Well, in our Porsche keys to the race, we said high tire wear circuits here particularly with the heat and the rears would take a lot of stick a lot of damage on that car don't forget they lost some aero from the right rear as well no action for the banging and boring at turn one between the 33 of uh, Jerome Blinkermolen and the 63 of Alessandro Perghidi how about it boys yes um, so how about this then I give you Jordan Taylor for Cadillac number 10, leading by 2.7 seconds with 19 minutes to go. Then the three cars who are the best off for fuel, Bomarito, Brown and Simpson, 55, 54 and 99. The red number 55, Mazda, the white and tangerine number 54, Brown uh, for Court Autosport and the bright red of the 99 Gainscore car. This is a replay, isn't it? I think up? it's um, is it, it's a racing incident, is it? I suppose it is. Going into the first corner, they both lost out. Nobody wanted to give way there. And it wasn't the... There was a little bit of intimidation moving around into the braking area, but it wasn't on the level that we saw early on between Nick Tandy and Richard Westbrook, for example. Yeah. Heck of a save by both of the cars. <laughs> So, Per Gidi's first time here. And, well, Jerome Blingamolen has such experience everywhere on the IMSA schedule. Five times he stood on the top step of a podium here, Jerome Blingamolen. Uh, let's just take stock for a moment with 18 minutes to go. Here's our Cadillac race update. We'll start in GTD where Pat Long for Wright Motorsports leads for Porsche in the 58 red and white car by 
nearly three seconds from Brian Sellers, who I'm sure is thinking championship right now, leading the championship and the best of the top level championship runners in the 48 Lamborghini. Behind him, the 96, Marcus Paltala in the Turner BMW, the blue and yellow car, but there's not a big gap there, maybe a couple of seconds. And then it's tight with Blake Amorland, Marcelli, Parente, and Lawson Aschenbach, and Andy Lally and Per Gidi to that. And that's down the ninth position, and there's not a second between any one of those. In GT Le Mans, it's the renaissance of RLL and BMW. Conor de Filippi by two seconds now over Richard Westbrook. 25 BMW, that's the white BMW M8 GT LM. And the 67, the battered, the bruised, the less than complete number 67 of Richard Westbrook, the Ford GT. Then Tom Milner, eight tenths of a second further back in third position. Then Garcia, who's two seconds back. And Corbett need to swap those cars around if there's no further action because the third car is the, the fourth place car the number three is best place in the championship and they are three seconds ahead of Earl Bamba who's also in championship contention uh, with his teammate Lawrence Van Tour in fourth position in the championship at the moment fifth position in this race in the 912 Porsche in time at the head of the field Cadillac in the Cadillac update by 5.3 seconds Jordan Taylor trying to get some Real estate between himself in that gloss black Konica Minolta, Wayne Taylor Racing Cadillac and Jonathan Bomarito in the 55 Mazda who has a second and a half of the 54 Colin Brown and Stephen Simpson in the 99 is about the same further back. Then there are big gaps because everybody else has made a pit stop recently. So we know that Felipe Nazar is the first car that absolutely, certainly, without any doubt whatsoever could go to the end, but he's got 45 seconds between himself and Jordan Taylor and 37 seconds between himself and the current fourth place car of Stephen Simpson. However, don't forget they slammed new tyres onto that car, at least on the left hand side, and he's now picking up pace, did his best lap last time around of a 53.6 and he's just put the fastest first sector in of anyone in that last lap around. Yeah, and, and, and Dane Cameron ditto. Uh, whatever you just said, Dane Cameron doing exactly <laughs> the same. Uh, that uh, identical lap times between those two last time around. They were separated before they came into the pits by about five seconds, and it's now five and a half seconds between the number 31 and the uh, number six car. So this is a fascinating motor race. But Jordan Taylor staying out there. Yeah, I think they'll leave him out as long as they can, Jeremy, just in case with under 15 minutes to go, anything happens out on the track. He might be able to react quicker. Colin Brown picking his way through traffic, trying to get onto the back of Jonathan Bomarito. Bomarito picking up his pace, but getting stymied by the traffic. Last time around, 59-3 from Bomarito, 59-1 from Colin Brown on all the tyres. Fuel loads yeah, really the, way the same now, working the way through traffic. I think, though, Indeed. Jeremy, that That's will slow true. them down a wee bit. Yeah, quite a bit. Four or five seconds. Bleak and Morland closing into the back of Marcus Paltala in the battle for third place in GT Daytona. That's 33 Mercedes catching 96 BMW, the Turner car. I'm sure Bill Oberlin is listening and watching at home. Bill, we wish you all the best. We'll see you at VIR in a couple of weeks' time for the second of the GT only festivals on the IMSA calendar this year and we'll be there to cover every moment of it from first free practice here on IMSA Radio RS2 part of the Radio Show Limited network of channels and the race of course will be on XM Sirius as this one is and will be sound and vision on IMSA TV everywhere in the world for qualifying and everywhere except the US for the Number race nine itself. Number 9.12 is slow. 9.12 slowing down Earl Bamba that's an issue the engine is not running. Shea Adam, he's just cruised past you, dead stick. Yep, there is no life to that Porsche. Uh, no one way. of the brake lights just came on, but it sounded almost as if you pulled in the clutch and then shut the engine off. So there is trouble for another one of our GTLM runners. And that is fourth place in the championship there. As Colin Brown taking all kinds of risks, trying to get onto the back of Jonathan Bomarito. I think they know 
they've got to know they're going the distance now. Bomarito and Brown. Bomarito, question mark, maybe a couple of laps short for the little two-litre turbocharged Mazda engine. But I think Brown knows that he's going the distance. I think they've told him it's attack mode now, Colin. Surely Jordan Taylor, who's a couple, at least a couple of laps worse off on fuel, can't make it. But if he can, well, they're going to have to chase him down and make him burn fuel. And the pass is on. The championship pass has happened for Team Corvette Racing. Antonio Garcia has gone up into third place. That is smart, smart tactics. And well played by the guys on the wall. Tommy Milner is a team player and knows that it would happen the other way around for him. The three car second place in the championships by just a point. And the car that led coming in here, the Ford number 66 of Joey Hand and Dirk Muller, right at the back of the field. So this could be something like a 10 point swing. And at the moment, they'll be leaving very close to the championship lead. It's all going to depend where Richard Westbrook finishes in the Kai shares with Ryan Briscoe. But that's a smart move. They're going to get, they're all going to be tied, aren't they, as they leave here? Yeah. And the number 67 car, by the way, is closing in now yes, he is. on, uh, on Conor Di Filippi again. That gap that was two seconds is now just one. And that's why I think they've sprung, um, they've sprung Garcia. Indeed. And sent Garcia after Westbrook, just in case he gets close to Felipe or the BMW has an issue. Well, he is close to him now. It's not even a second. It was a second across the line. The 25 BMW is now firmly in the sights. Target acquired for Richard Westbrook. No fuel saving for Richard now. He's been set on full attack mode. 31 Felipe Nasser, by the way, the car that we know can go all the way to the end. Just did a 53-1 last time around. 11 minutes to go. He's taking big chunks of time out the car in front, remember, has newer Continental rubber. And he is carving through the traffic in particular much better than the cars ahead. And he's pulled... Wait a minute, am I reading that right? He's pulled 10 seconds out of Stephen Simpson in the last few laps. Sure, because no, the, 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 the cars ahead of him are, are saving fuel. Wow, that's extraordinary. The number 10... Cadillac leading with a little bit of damage to that left rear corner. Nine and a half seconds. Taylor to Bomarito. 53, 54-8 uh, last time around, but there was traffic involved for Bomarito with a 56-2 and 56-1 for Colin Brown. Well, if the master of the two Oric is a saving fuel at this point, then Jordan Taylor has to because he's two laps worse off for fuel. Wayne Taylor, Jordan's dad, well, he knows how to win races and championships, both as a driver and a team owner. And lots of chat going backwards and forwards as we're inside 10 minutes. Lots to fight for here, Jeremy. In the prototype classes, the top three, question marks over the fuel. Top four make that. Felipe Nasser could still get a result here for the 31 Cadillac. In GT Le Mans, Richard Westbrook trying to put pressure on Conor de Felipe. Antonio Garcia, great lap last time around for Garcia, 2-4-4. Yeah, 9 12 car is off the pace as well, by the way, isn't it? Well, uh, well, he went through with dead stick last time, didn't no, he? No, that was the other one, wasn't it? No, no, that was the Bamba car. Oh, true, true. Yeah. True, no, no, you're right. And by the way, in the championship standings, here's something significant. Because the BMW number 20, 24 went behind the wall, the black car, and hasn't yet reappeared, and will not reappear, I'm hearing now from our pit reporter, Shea Adam. Joey Hand, our championship leader, is now up the seventh in class. Now, that doesn't sound like it's a great result, but it's a few extra points that they didn't expect to get. They were only going to get better than eighth with attrition or unreliability further up the field. Battle through turn one, two prototypes side by side. And it's Ryan DL, check that, it's Pipo Durrani having a battle with Philippe Albuquerque. They got side by side for a moment and then GTD traffic intervened. 
Opportunist manoeuvre from the 63 Ferrari of Alessandro Perghini who goes past Alvaro Parent and that's got championship implications yeah. too. Parent fighting down the inside into turn five and I think he's too far back and he is. And Perghini back up a position there and into sixth. It's happening everywhere on the track and at this stage of the season, every position means points and every point means championship positions. This is absolutely fantastic. It is and the inside now seven and a half minutes to go in this race. And that gap between first and second GTLM has kind of stabilized uh, at around about a second or a second and a half it was this time around as uh, both of them put one lap down by well, another lap down by kind of a 10. Just to reiterate, the 912 is still running, but it is. Yeah. What better pace that time it looked like. Yeah, so maybe just something knocked out of Kilter. 2061 last time around. Still not great. He's a couple of seconds off the pace of the cars. And Shea Adam gives us this Continental Tire pit lane report about our leader. Movement on the pit wall of the Wayne Taylor Racing Cadillac. It looks like Jordan Taylor is going to be visiting me soon, John, and it is fuel only. If that happens, you've got a hustle to Master Team Yost because I want you standing right next to John Doonan when that car takes the lead, if it takes the lead. There's a 14 second gap. Jordan Taylor has given his absolute all to try and get as much of a gap between himself and the chasing pack as possible. The, the gap back to the first car we know can go all the way is 36 and a half seconds. He'll get out in front of Felipe Nasa maybe but NASA's now only 15 seconds off the back of Steven Simpson, and that yeah. could be a battle for third position on the podium in the next six yeah, minutes. He, he took five seconds out of him on that last lap around. I think the big thing here, Jeremy, two, two big things here, our Porsche keys to the race, manage tyres and manage fuel. The 31 car's got new tyres on one side and fuel to burn. The other cars are on all the tyres and are eking it out towards the finish. Magnificent stuff. 31 had new rear tyres. New rear tyres, she reminds me. Great action in GT Daytona as well, as Per Gidi's got past the Lexus of Carl Marcelli. This is another great run towards the end of the race by the 63 WeatherTech Ferrari. Leader in the pit lane, Shea Adam with a Continental Tire pit lane report. Drama at the very end of the race. It will be fuel only for Jordan Taylor as he rumbles down the pit lane. It's another one of these painful pit lanes, John, because it is so long. So they were about three laps short on fuel. They knew from a long time back that they weren't gonna make it, but the fuel hose is going in as Jordan hits his marks now. Mazda leads at Road America with under 10 minutes to go. Fuel nozzle still attached to the 10 now. Comes out. Jordan is set on his way. The key thing about that shit, that car is, yeah, as you say, two, possibly three laps short. They had two laps fewer foot fuel in the car than the car that's just gone into the lead. Jonathan Bomarito by seven tenths by yeah just over a second in fact on colin brown and then stephen simpson has dropped to nine and a half seconds back simpson i think clearly feels they're struggling a little more on fuel and he is now only 10.8 seconds ahead of philippe nasa the 31 is not out of this yet and mazda are on the wall mazda are on the wall as the charge from alessandro pagini by the way continues He's just had contact with the 33 Mercedes one, two, three, four times. Oh, that's going to get him a penalty. Maybe both of them. I think there was a bit of braking going on there as well. That's a bit of petulant behavior. Blake and Morland and Pergini, the stewards will be looking at that. And uh, Kyle Marcelli nipped past the pair of them there. Alvaro Parent must have been pretty close to making up a couple of places as well. Well, as with Andy Lally and uh, Los Nashenbach, because that, that quartet was covered by less than a second. Quartet was covered by less than a second last time across the start finish line. Gotta leave the leave the 55 out, guys. Leave him out. There's three and a half minutes to go. Meantime, Blake Morland still at it. Going up, he's got the wheels off the grass again. We saw that earlier on today. 55 is and in. And the 55's in. Two laps short of a race victory, and Colin Brown goes through for Core. 
Is this going to be another famous victory for the Privateer team as Mazda Team Yost comes to a stop? Fuel nozzle is attached. They are doing fuel only, no thought of the tires. As the engine is revving and the Mazda is sent back out, it was that close. Oh, my goodness me. It is two laps. That's all it was. There's a lot of bent and battered and pre-loved GTD cars coming round to finishing positions here. Colin Brown, I reckon, is going to win this. Brown's going to win it. Steven Simpson, though, is under real pressure now. Felipe Nasser, only six seconds behind him. And Steven Simpson, in second place, might not be able to make it. Well, he's on massive They're on the line. Though, Wait sure. a minute. There's more drama. Sheer Adam down in pit lane. GT Le Mans isn't over. They've got the fuel hose for the 25 BMW. They're expecting Connor to need to come in. No way. This is a fast circuit, very fast indeed. 130 miles an hour for the prototype. That's the lap average around here. And the GT Le Mans cars are burning fuel for fun too. Felipe, Conor de Felipe has been passed. He's running out of fuel. He might not make it to the pits. Westbrook's gone through. Garcia's gone through. Championships thrown wide apart again as Garcia and Magnussen's car in the second place yet again. But that is great. It's great. And I don't think the BMW is going to make the pit lane. He's slowing down. Coming through 13, and it's all uphill. And Colin Brown's right behind him in the now leading prototype. Colin needs to keep his wits about him there as the BMW struggles to the right-hand side of the road. Through goes Ollie Gavin. Gavin's on the podium. Oh, my goodness. And the BMW is not going to make it up the hill, Jeremy. The I white flag right. is think... out for Colin Brown. Four miles well, for Colin Brown. They've done it again. And the number three car is right with the 67 as well, pretty much. So he's second between first and second now in GTLM. Well, they might have to do another lap, depending on how hard Colin Brown pushes, because he's right behind them. He's got three seconds on Stephen Simpson. Stephen Simpson's been caught by Philippe Nazir, who is fueled to the, the end. And the BMW hasn't made it up the hill. It's made it three quarters of the way. He can see the pit in area. And Conor de Felipe, what a gent, is rolling it back behind the wall so it doesn't cause a full course yellow. Extraordinary. Here comes Felipe Nazar round the outside at turn five of Stephen Simpson. But that was never on. Never on. Colin Brown can lift off, he can cruise, but Simpson can't. Simpson, actually, Simpson's right there. Two, Colin, 206, by the way, the no, last lap for Colin Brown. Colin Brown, he's struggling. Yeah, I, Colin I, Brown is struggling. This, this is, this is Nasser's race. Felipe Nasser's going to win this. Felipe Nasser is, is going to win this race. Colin Brown has had to let a Corvette go back by him. This is extraordinary. My blood pressure's higher than their fuel pressure at the moment as they come round the last half a lap. Colin Brown may not make it. Stephen Simpson is holding off Felipe Nasser. I've no idea how, and it's uphill. It's an uphill run to the checkered flag from Canada Corner, which is where our leader is right now. Richard Westbrook, by the way, I think he's going to do it. Is he? just about going to make it, but he might have to do one more lap. And Garcia won't. No, he, he'll let. He'll let the. Uh, he's got to yeah. let the leader go. That's wow. smart driving. That's smart driving by Westbrook. And Core Autosport have done it again from the back of the prototype oh, on to the, the front. On the and line. on the line, Stephen Simpson holds on by 0 0.008 of a second. Felipe Nasser was 2.3 seconds away from winning the race in GT Daytona. Pat Long is going to take it. Brian Sellers is going to be second. And Andy Lally's in the wall. It's a big one. Lally gets pushed into the wall by Paul Tala. No, check that. It was by. The 86 Parente, Aschenbach was in there as well. They were all battling over minor positions, but Wright Motorsports felt they should have had the win at the last round at Lime Rock Park. Brian Sellers will come home in second and extend the championship lead. And Marcus Paltala expecting a weekend off and drafted in to turn them all to sports at the last moment will be third.
Garcia dropped back at the end. You're right, Jeremy. The two Corvettes changed places. That must have been a lack of fuel for Garcia as well. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Where's the GTLM battle? Here we go. Um, coming up the hill is uh, Patrick. GTD. Oh. Patrick gets through. Sigh of relief. Big smile for Christina Nielsen. Well and deserved. Brian Sellers closed right in at the end there to 3.8 seconds. Through goes Paltala now. He will take. No! Per Guidi's gone through into third on the last lap. What a charge from Per Guidi in the 63. That is an extraordinary run for the WeatherTech Mercedes. He'd got through at the early part of that last lap when all the action was happening behind him and Andy Lally ends up in the wall. Well, that's an extraordinary finish. The 44 just getting eased out gently. Well, I think there was side-to-side -side contact from Kyle Marcelli in the 14 Lexus on Andy Lally that put him on the grass. But uh, seeing that, re Andy's fine, he's waving to the crowd. Seeing that, I just caught a glimpse of Per Guidi, who was already at the head of the field. And the 99 has ran out of fuel on the slowing down lap. Colin Brown is going to make it home. Let's go to the GTD winners. Finally, winners this year for Wright Motorsport. Pat Long brings it home. Christina Nielsen did a great job in the middle of the race. Held third position all the way through a stint. I didn't think it was going to take this far in the season before Patrick Long and Christina Nielsen wound up in the victory lane. Christina, first win for Wright Motorsport and GTD. First win for you and a Porsche. How good does this feel? Amazing. I mean, we were so close to a podium at Lime Rock. And the competition is really fierce, to, so to finally be here and, you know, to carry the momentum through is just amazing. And then to do it with the victory is the first podium. I can't thank Wright Motorsport and Porsche North America and Porsche enough for everything they've done. Um, you know, we're standing here today also because of Porsche Consulting and Porsche Digital. And it's just a great group of people that have put this program together and we're finally starting to see the results. So I am, I'm so grateful, so happy. Congratulations on this one. You still got three more to go. I know, right? Our overall winner, Colin Brown, has run out of fuel three quarters of the way around the slow down lap. Stephen Simpson didn't make it that far. Felipe Naz is going, one more lap, guys, one more lap. I would have had that. That is extraordinary. It looks like to me, and maybe we get a confirmation here that Garcia was running short as well, and Tommy Milder went back through. Um, it was by eight tenths of a second. Not sure that was smart, actually, because there was 15 and a half seconds between them and the two Porsches, 9.12 and 9.11 finishing the right way for Porsche as far as the championship is concerned. Joey Hahn came in this weekend on the points lead position for GTLM and only picks up seventh place. So not sure what happened there. Maybe there was just a stutter from Garcia. It could have been, of course, that what they said was, go through, try and catch Westy. If you can't catch Westy, let Tommy back through again, which that's, you I know. I doubt it, no. I doubt it. What's I think, the points differential it, it, from second to it third? It fell back a long, a long way on that last lap. But I did, uh, yeah, only did eight uh, tenths, Garcia. But only eight tenths on his teammate. No, 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 no. Yeah, he was only eight tenths behind his teammate when he crossed the line. Um, so I... He lost six seconds, yes, on that yeah. last oh, lap. So but, say, yes, right, right. Yeah, that's uh, odd. So that's I'm odd. not sure about that one. We'll get uh, more reaction in a moment from Shea Adam. I'll just give you a quick reminder of of uh, Post Race Tech, Michelin Post Race Tech, hashtag Michelin PRT. Where do we even start? <laughs> Jeremy, let's get some points <laughs> in the bag while we're waiting for some more interviews. Well, OK, with uh, Felipe Nasser and Eric Curran will extend their lead in the Prototype Championship. They've now got 228 I reckon to the 221 of Philippe Albuquerque, uh, who slipped back there in the closing stages. The John Bennett, Colin Brown with their second win in a row. Uh, they will move up into third place, just three points behind Albuquerque. Wow. And two points ahead of Jordan Taylor and Renga van der Zander. Uh, as far as the GT Le Mans points The, the are new concerned. leader will be Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe. In the winning number 67 car. Yes. Uh, let's have a quick word with John Bennett while you're working that out. A win, but only just for the core Autosport car. 
Congrats, John. That's two in a row. It's going to take a while while Colin gets back because he ran out of fuel on the cool yeah, down yeah, lap. Yeah, yeah. How's your pulse? Yeah, the pulse is uh, is pretty high and, and uh, looking forward to seeing Colin come back. He's uh, uh, the hero here. I mean, uh, driving fast and saving fuel and, and Jeff, his, uh, Jeff Brown and, and Tyler, our race engineers, uh, rolling the dice, look at me, roll the dice again. And, and uh, yeah, very, very thin uh, uh, win today on, on fuel savings, but uh, strategy is strategy and, and uh, super uh, excited for our team. You're okay that a uh, Chevy is pulling you into the victory lane because you're going to the victory lane. Congrats. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. Yeah, and he did his part again. Remember, they started dead last. They sh qualified third, but as Colin had done the qualifying, then they had to give up that uh, third position starting to allow John to start the race and then play the tactical game from there and it's worked perfectly for them again Stephen Simpson just about hanging on by 0 0.008 of a second for the gain score the number 99 car coming through the Red Dragon and Felipe Nasser and Eric Curran so close to second place and a lap away from winning it simple as that four miles away from winning it two and a half minutes away from winning it that's what we're talking about we said in our porsche keys to the race fine margins let's uh, have a word with our gt Le Mans winners before we look at the championship situation well, the most important thing that Ryan Briscoe will be holding today is his daughter, but he also gets a nice first place trophy, Ryan. Another win, another shot at the championship lead. How much were you sweating during that last stint? Uh, honestly, well, a lot. I was sweating for the Corvettes coming up behind us. Um, I was surprised the BMW ran out of fuel, but it, it sort of all made sense in the end when we saw how they short pitted the, the stop before. But uh, great drive by, uh, by Rick there. I mean, just flawless drive. Um, you know, really bad luck for our teammates. I mean, they, they had the speed and uh, it sort of bit them again here for the second time in three years. But, uh, you know, awesome job by everyone at Chip Ganassi Racing this weekend. Super proud and, uh, you know, it's, it's an exciting championship battle, that's for sure. Four in a row for Ford. Good luck at VIR. Yeah, four in a row. It's uh, either, you know, one car wins and the other's nowhere. So uh, we need to get them both up there. But, uh, yeah, we love the wins and uh, hopefully we can keep winning. Good job. Thank you. Ah, championship positions in GTLM, unofficially, Jeremy Shaw. Uh, 241 for Richard Westbrook, Ryan Briscoe, 237 for Jan Magnus and Antonio Garcia, who came in in second place. Uh, Joey Hand and Dirk Mueller, who le led coming in here, now have two. No, 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 Gar Garcia came in third. Correct. Oh, they were, they were second in points coming in. Uh, here sorry, this came into this yeah, weekend third in second place. Third place sorry, sorry. Yeah, yes. No, that's fine. So there'll be four points behind. Uh, Westy and so uh, if they'd Ryan come Briscoe. second, that's an extra two points, isn't it? They would an have only been two points, points back. Yeah. yeah, so they're now four points back. And, okay. uh, and Joey, Joey, Joey Hand and Dirk Mueller. Uh, the, the, the problem for the BMW by the, at, the, at the end, by the way, wasn't quite enough for Joey Hand and Dirk Mueller to pick up one more position. So they end up in seventh, and they will have 232 points. So they're now nine behind their teammates, Westbrook and Briscoe, coming into this weekend. But you know what? I applaud RLL, though, because they gave it a go. Uh, they were what a, a lap oh short yeah. and you know a couple of laps short at the end but really they did give it a go and uh, that was the only way they could win it uh, they end up sixth when again if that race had been a couple of extra laps of yellow they might have been in with a chance uh, the 912 where does the 912 end up in all of that because uh, they came in in fourth position to the stay in fourth yeah Jeremy. no actually they'll they'll lose out to gavin and milner who yes, will now I have so. uh, two 27 to the 225 of Vantor and Bamba. Right. Let's uh, hear from the other half of Wright Motorsports' victorious number 58 Porsche GT Daytona crew. What a week it's been for Pat Long. Exceptionally, uh, exceptionally successful first ever lift outside of the UK, outside of the US in the UK. Now gets a win on Sunday. And it's been more than 1,600 days since Pat Long has won an IMSA competition. It was Sebring 2014, way overdue, but you set it in qualifying. You got the pole, but you still had to capitalize on the win. You did it. How hard was that race? Yeah, until you're going away from IMSA for a couple of years and coming back, uh, you see that the competition has grown. Um, that was a special race. Um, a good friend of mine is Brian Sellers, and... Uh, I knew I was going to have to throw some type of special move there on that restart, and that was the definitive moment of the race. I'm not sure I would have been able to get around him um, because the, the way that the dirty air works between our two cars is not favorable for us when we're behind. So uh, I put it all on the line. He raced me clean. Um, it was basically a move where 
Uh, I was looking to go to the outside, and then I knew that I might be running out of road as we got to the break zone, so I switched it up at the last second, and it was very close. But um, aside from that, the car was on rails all weekend. Um, I didn't have much tire there at the end. I decided to go for it in clean air and try to build a gap and then maintain that gap with, when traffic came through. And it played out, but uh, as we've seen this year, it can go any way. Congratulations, Pat. Thanks. Uh, yeah, Tuesday at the cottage is going to feel pretty good. Hey, I'll see you up there. <laughs> yeah, that'll be top Heading top up into top Canada top for a little break there as uh, GTD points, Jeremy Shaw. If uh, we can just have a quick look at that. But the second place for Brian Sellers and Madison Snow, very important indeed, given that their championship contenders in second place finished uh, down in seventh mm. uh, and fifth place for Blake Amorland and Ben Keating, who came in here third in the championship. Yeah, so what was a 10-point lead coming into this weekend? Now an 18-point advantage for Brian Sellers and Madison Snow. Still their worst finish of the season with a fourth place. That was uh, a couple of races uh, ago. So it's been a tr just a tremendous uh, effort by that team. That was at uh, Canadian Time Motorsport Park. Uh, other than that, they've been on the podium every single race. Two wins. This is actually their first second and four third-place finishes. Jeremy Shaw, we've got Michelin Post Race Tech to come on IMSA Radio RS2. We'll be uh, saying goodbye to our uh, TV audience shortly. Uh, stay tuned on RS2, part of the Radio Show Limited Network of Channels, and we'll discuss the race in more detail, but a quick summary, if you can, from that. Yeah, a thriller, wasn't it? Absolutely tremendous motor race. So it came down there to the, the fuel tank sides of the, of the P2 cars, it had to be said. They were able to uh, run longer on the fuel and stretch it out as well, just enough to get to the finish line. Two hours and 40 minutes. A lot of people say that isn't endurance. I'm not sure I could have taken any more, to be quite honest. All of the classes with something to talk about right to the end. Plenty of stories, and we'll be doing it again in a couple of weeks' time from VIR. Bye-bye from Road America.